All right, we're back with another episode of Speed Runs from the Crypt, a bi-weekly horror hoptic over on the GDQ channel. Hope you're all doing good today, and welcome back. Uh, before we start the show today, I just want to say that Frame Vitals will be having its next all-women speedrunning events, uh, Flame Vitals, in late August. Uh, type exclamation mark FF in Twitch chat, or go to gamesdonequick.com slash Frame Vitals for more info. I hope you're all doing good this week, and I guess kind of leading in from last time we were here two weeks ago, you may have remembered that, oh, we're doing games in 2021, and we're going to have on RE Village. However, unfortunately, Cat cannot make it at that time. So I decided, hey, we're going to try that again, because I wanted to show off Ari Village. I was actually uh, one of the main games I had planned for that show. And uh, Cat will be back later, but uh, I kind of had to make a, another theme revolving around that. So uh, today's theme is kind of weird, because I'm trying to describe to, uh, I guess, really anyone uh, about weird Japanese horror mythos is kind of strange. Either way... These two games, Ghostwire Tokyo and Resident Evil Village, both had prominent marketing featuring uh, something called the Hachi Shaku Sama, also known as Eight Feet Tall or the Really Tall Woman. Uh, it's a cool bit of horror mythos, so it's a fun way of chaining these games together. Uh, so it'll give you more clever themes to this idea. That was my idea. I thought it was fun. Also, I lost the remote for the door. I'll be back next time. So, anyway, uh, here is Ghostwire Tokyo featuring Nayadal. Take it away. Hey, everybody. I hope hope you're all doing well. Uh, I have quite a treat of a run for you tonight. Uh, joining me, of course, is Nico with a C for some help on the commentary. How's it going, Nico? Hello, brother. I'm doing good. Hi, everyone. Can't wait to get this run started. Yeah. So uh, before we get started, let's talk about the category real quick. We're running uh, any percent Tatari. So Tatari is the hardest difficulty. And any percent obviously means we're just trying to get through main mission as fast as possible. Uh, there is also all missions, which involves 42 missions and side quests and fun stuff. Not today. Um, <laughs> so <laughs> the main difference between Tatari and all the other difficulties is we do not earn XP in Tatari. We are permanently level one, which is kind of a pain because the skill points really do help with getting abilities and, and getting yourself through the run. Um, so we're at that deficit. We will be able to pick up some additional skill points throughout the run. Uh, and then the other main difference is pretty much every enemy attack will uh, kill us in two shots. So uh, the first hit will take us down to one HP. And the second hit will murder us. Um, so we're going to really try hard not to die. I'm going to do my best. Um, so I'm going to uh, pick the difficulty. And timing will start after I skip the first cutscene. Uh, there's going to be a lot of cutscenes that we're going to be skipping. Um, so let's, uh, let's get into it. So we're going to pick the difficulty. And it's going to give me some prompts real quick. And I'll count down from three. Three, two, one. Good luck, brother. Thank you, man. Uh, so this is Ghostwire. Uh, it's a uh, it's a really fun game. Visually, perhaps one of the most interesting looking games I've played in a long time. Uh, to, to set up the story a little bit, we're playing a dude named Akito. And uh, spoiler alert, the beginning of the game starts off with him uh, kind of dying. Uh, <laughs> however, we have our ghost buddy, KK, who sort of inhabits our body and brings us back to life because uh, there's there's some stuff going on in Tokyo and it's up to us <laughs> to sort it out. So e everybody in Tokyo has been turned into spirits. Uh, it's this big mess. There's fog everywhere. If we go into the fog, we take damage and eventually die. Uh, and our sister, um, Mari or Mary, is sort of missing and we're trying to find out what happened to her. Uh, she was at the hospital last time we saw her. So we're going to head over to the hospital. Um, you may have noticed I picked up a little plastic bag there. That's food. Uh, as Gauntlet Legends taught us, food is good. Um, <laughs> so food is our primary heals. And there's a few types of food that will actually give us certain benefits, like attack boost or defense boost, um, and a few other things like that. Uh, so we're going to we're gonna pick up basically as much safety food as we need. Uh, any Anything that's kind of on the way. We're not going to go super out of our way to get food. Um, um, and you may notice I'm shooting uh, out of my hands. Uh, what is the deal with that? Uh, we have some special spirit powers, uh, thanks to KK manifesting in our body. Uh, come on. There we go. And uh, thanks to that, we're able to attack with various uh, ethers, essentially. So right now, currently, we only have wind. Uh, it's 
it's kind of the weakest, but uh, it, it's very useful for just doing quick DPS. Uh, and we can also charge. We're only going to be doing this twice, I think, throughout the whole run, because it's very slow. Um, and as you can see, I'm grabbing a core, which is sort of like the finisher that you can do on enemies. Uh, it gives you a little bit of extra ammo, so killing enemies will restore your ether. And uh, it's, it's generally a good way to clear out multiple enemies at once, so you can have multiple cores exposed, and then uh, get all their cores at once. It's, it's, it'll come into play a little bit later. Um, but basically, uh, we're, we're just doing some movement right now. Uh, the movement in this game is, is sort of interesting. It's, it's actually, it feels really good when you get it right. Uh, it's kind of a bummer when you don't. But uh, there's no punishment for running into walls in this game. So you'll see me when I'm taking corners. I'm going to be like kind of looking into the wall and pushing it as close as I can go just to get like the best possible line and save sort of as much time as possible. Um, also, as a, as a slight word of warning, uh, if you're photosensitive, there's some sort of flashing glitch effects, kind of like what you're seeing right now. They're not, it's it's not super over the top, but, you know, just be mindful of yourself. Um, so now we're going to skip some cutscenes. Uh, <laughs> interesting thing about cutscene skips, uh, fortunately, you can basically just hold the cutscene skip button through all the cutscenes, so you don't have to repress and sort of time your cutscene skips to get like a frame-perfect cutscene save. So uh, we found out our sister is in some trouble. Uh, she's been taken, and we have to go get her. Pretty, pretty typical sort of story here. Yeah, um, just right here is actually where, uh, if you've noticed, Nero is playing on the Spanish language. This particular elevator is actually the reason why, because for some reason, um, the elevator comes down faster because it's like a dialogue trigger when uh, the doors are opening. So the Spanish one is just faster, and that's why we have it. Yeah, uh, there's actually two Spanish language options. There's Spanish Spain, and then there's another <laughs> there's another Spanish option. And and um, basically, we uh, somebody did the math in the community to figure out that uh, some of the dialogues are are kind of significantly faster in Spanish. So for this run, we play in Spanish. Yep. Uh, so now we're on our way. We're gonna take a little shortcut through the fog. You'll see uh, the screen effect. That means I'm slowly having my health drained. It's it's not a huge deal. Uh, we're gonna scoop some food, and uh, we're in right now, sort of the tutorial section. Uh, KK is kind of teaching us what the deal is with this uh, spirit Tokyo that we're trapped in. Um, and these are the first annoying dudes that we're gonna have to deal with. So obviously, being the hardest difficulty. Dudes are very tanky, and we don't really want to take any sort of damage, because as I said, Akito has no iframes. If he takes damage uh, multiple hits in a row, he just goes down. There's no uh, no sort of like chance for redemption, uh, no frame that we can heal real quick and, and save ourselves. So it's a little, you know, we're constantly threading the needle here. Um, and right now we're going to go, uh, we, we cleansed a first shrine, which is going to come up a lot, and the shrine clears fog and sort of opens up the map, because this is an open world game. Uh, it's actually the first open world speedrun I've done. Uh, and we're going to grab some uh, katashiros, which allow us to capture spirits. Uh, in a casual playthrough, there are 240,000 spirits in <laughs> this world that you can collect. Uh, there's a lot of collectibles, actually. There's 123 collectible items, also. Uh, so if you're if you're looking for a completionist playthrough that'll uh, take a while, this is probably the one. Um, so we're gonna capture some spirits. Uh, in, in a casual playthrough, you would be doing a lot of this, like like hours of this, realistically. In the speed run, we're only gonna be doing it once or twice. So, uh, or actually just <laughs> once, specifically, yeah. As long as I don't make any mistakes. Um, <laughs> so, uh, yeah, now we're headed to KK's apartment. KK is basically trying to teach us everything that we need to, to know to, to be up to date on the spirit world, because KK has been chilling in the spirit world for quite some time. He has friends in the spirit world. They're, they're pals and stuff. So we're going to come to this phone booth, and uh, we're going to talk to Ed, sort of. <laughs> Ed yeah. is uh, one of the crew members uh, from KK's crew. There is, uh, I think there are four in total. Uh, KK, Ed, Rinko, and the last name. Yeah, I don't know the, I don't know the last it's one. It's the girl. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> we'll the, look the girl. at her name later. I can't remember her name from live with me right now, I'm so sorry. Uh, but yeah, basically Ed doesn't talk to people, he just leaves voice messages. So uh, every time we go to a phone booth and 
there's some dude talking to us. It's basically Ed who left the voice message, says something to us. And um, yeah, um, Mari, that uh, we went to visit at the hospital, uh, who was in a coma, has been taken by a guy who we only know as the man with the Hanya mask. And um, basically he has taken Mari because she is the perfect vessel because she is floating between life and death. So um, yeah, that dude wants her for reviving his wife and daughter, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah. Um, so what you just saw me do is uh, we did a hand seal to clear sort of the, uh, the, the curse or the hex. Uh, we're going to be doing that a few times throughout the run. It doesn't come up too much in any percent. Um, and uh, basically what the game wants you to do is you kind of do a pattern with your mouse. However, there is a little tech where we can sort of skip having to do the pattern because the pattern is kind of slow. And we let KK take over and we can easily blast the hand seal. Um, and now we're looking at some mandatory key items that the game wants you to look at to, uh, to get up to date with the story. And we're going to pick up some notes and head on out. Uh, we also picked up a bow. That was what was in the uh, case. The bow is going to be very useful in this run because, it, like I said, enemies are pretty tanky. And for the most part, we're going to be going for headshots on a lot of dudes just to uh, make sure that they're not a problem. So now we're trapped. Uh, the, the people that we've been chasing have uh, set up this barrier around us, and we need to cleanse these stones to uh, get rid of the barrier. And this is sort of the first, uh, like, alternate reality sort of trippy sequence that you get. There's a few of these. Um, and visually, they're, like, really cool. There's a lot of uh, sort of Inception style, the world is upside down, simulation things. Um, and uh, basically, this is the bow tutorial here. He's like, shoot a, shoot a bow, do not move the mouse, and you just <laughs> wind up and shoot. And uh, we're on our way. Uh, the first 10 minutes of this run or so is is basically sort of a tutorial where it's very linear. You can't really explore yet. The game won't let you. Uh, mm -hmm. Everything is covered in fog. But once we get past the first 10 minutes, the whole world opens up. You can theoretically go anywhere. You can do things in all sorts of different orders. Um, so it is very much an open world game, although I'm not going to be making it look like it's an open world game. <laughs> it's going to look super linear because we are trying <laughs> yeah. to finish the game as fast as possible. Um, but yeah. While it is very, very linear in the, in the beginning, and it is like the tutorial area, on this difficulty, it is actually insanely difficult still, because like Little said earlier, everything almost one-shots you. You get hit once, you are at one HP, and if you get super unlucky and two attacks were flying at you at the same time and you didn't get a perfect block on one of them, then you're actually just dead. Yeah, um, yeah so so this game, uh, it'll it's going to come up later, I'm sure. But uh, this game uh, has a uh, perfect parry sort of block system where if you perfectly block something, you take no damage at all. And pretty much every time we get attacked, um, I'm going to try and go for the perfect block. It's not the smallest window. It's not like a frame window, but uh, it's not that bad. So we're cleansing some corruption. KK is instructing us on how to, how to chase down this dude that we've been following. And uh, we're kind of heading into the first open world sort of segment. Um, but for the most part, all, all business as usual. The, the intro is basically just movement. Um, and uh, you'll also notice me doing animation canceling from time to time. If you see me block after I pick something up or after I cleanse a shrine, it's usually to stop the animation, which also saves a little bit of time. Uh, this is a Tengu. It is a, uh, as you can tell, the, the, the universe of this game is, is all based in uh, sort of Japanese uh, creepy mythology and folklore. So uh, all the spirits actually have sort of a significance in the folklore. Uh, I know some of them, but uh, the, the interesting thing about this game is you can actually read the documents like it's a Wikipedia, basically. And, <laughs> <laughs> There's a lot of stuff that you can learn just from uh, sort of picking up things and interacting with things. Yeah. So now we're free. Uh, we have the ability to glide thanks to KK's spirit uh, powers. And uh, we're going to be... I didn't get the map dialogue. Huh. That's very strange. I've... Uh, that's genuinely never happened before. Yeah. I hope, I was... I hope we're not softlocked, question mark. It'd be fine. Right? It's going to let me continue, right? Well, I guess we're going to find out. Yeah, I mean, that, we have to cleanse this regardless, so you should be fine. That's really interesting. Uh, okay. 
So what was supposed to happen there is uh, <laughs> after he got onto the second part of the rooftops, um, the map was supposed to forcefully open. And that's basically like a tutorial on the map and like showing you, yo, this is where you need to go to cleanse the Tory gates, which are these that he's doing right now. Uh, it didn't open though, but uh, usually yeah. we take that because it's a force one to get some skills. Because we want to upgrade skills as little as possible because of something you'll be later. But uh, yeah. yeah, not sure if he found some new tech or something. We have to uh, look. Uh, look yeah, look I'm wondering if maybe <laughs> maybe if you get far enough, it doesn't trigger properly. Uh, too the... fast, chat. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, maybe maybe a little too fast. I I just hope this doesn't. Uh, I hope this triggers the next cutscene. We'll see um, here in a second. <laughs> yeah. I'm cross, cross fingers. <laughs> yeah, so this is a multi gate shrine. Uh, there's three gates to clear it out. And uh, we just finished. Hey, the cutscene started. Okay. Hey, okay, nice. Thank. <laughs> Thank whatever <laughs> RNG God caused, caused us to not have that dialogue. That's so weird. Um, so we're about to get our second uh, ether type. Uh, right now we just have wind shots. We're going to get the next element, which is fire. Um, Fire is easily the strongest one. It's the one we're going to prefer for dumping as much damage as possible in as little time as possible. Um, the only downside to fire, obviously, is we only have five shots. And by the end of the run, we'll have a max of seven. But they're kind of, uh, you know, you, you want to save them for when they're absolutely necessary. Uh, although sometimes they come up in panic situations and then we find ourselves low on ammo. So ammo conservation is going to be a big theme of this difficulty. It's really not a problem in any of the other difficulties. Uh, in this one, it is. Uh, so I just prayed to a Jizzo statue, which increases our capacity for fire by one. I'm going to pick up a nether green tea, which gives us an attack boost. And then I'm going to initiate our <laughs> wonderful Lady D-esque <laughs> character. This is the theme that ties tonight's games. Let's go. Um, <laughs> it's actually, it's a really cool design, honestly. Um, so we're going to bait her over here. That was a perfect block. Uh, we're going to hit that, and then we're just going to spam some fire at her and pray that she's nice here. There we go. Not bad. Yeah, really good, dude. Yeah. That is, uh, um, that is a lot harder than it looks. Because, <laughs> uh, again, he hits you twice or dead. <laughs> yeah, and uh, she likes to combo off the first hit. So if she gets a successful first hit, she'll go into the second one almost automatically. Um, so now we got uh, water. This is our third and final uh, ether essence. Um, the water shoots out kind of a widespread uh, blast. It's not super useful because it's kind of slow, but we will be using it in a few instances where we have time to charge it up. Um, and now we get some fun movement. Uh, we're gonna do the tower climb. Uh, this this was sort of routed and optimized by Seven Ray D. Uh, Nico, if you want to take over while I try not to fall off railings. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, for sure. Yeah, so this has a bunch of different optimizations from a bunch of different guys. Uh, Trey or Seven Ray D um, was definitely one of the pioneers of it, trying to find out how we could get up on this tower without having to take a very long elevator. Skips about, I think, one minute of just waiting, basically. And uh, yeah, as you're going to see here, he's going to try to glide a lot and climb a lot on uh, different <clears throat> different objects to try to get up to this tango right here. And he does get it. Absolutely amazing. And uh, every time yep. you see him go on a railing here and jump off to the side, that's because the glide mechanic is basically wanting you to be out in the open. So that's why he's trying to jump on top of railing, jump a little bit out and get the glide going. And uh, now he's coming yeah. up to the rooftop fight, which is, uh, I think, uh, new enemies as well. The, I think the little girl is a new enemy here, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, no, I think she's always there. Um, so we're going to try and get core grabs on these guys. Oh, I kind of messed up. Um, so we're just going to hide a little bit because this dude's about to blast his way. Yep, there we go. And then we're just going to go for headshots if we can. If my aim doesn't betray me. Yeah, so the nice thing about the floating spirit dudes is they'll actually uh, sort of dive bomb you if uh, <laughs> you do any sort of damage to them. And uh, so all we need to do is hit them like a couple times. We don't actually need to grab their cores. I just try to do it for speed and swag. Um, and that's that's the gate. It's actually kind of a hard gate. I've died there before in the past. Uh, and now we're gonna <laughs> we're gonna pick up a stun talisman and uh, the uh, talismanes, if you will. 
And these uh, talismans are actually amazing. They help yeah. so much. <laughs> They're actually really useful in this uh, category, especially, because they essentially stun enemies, and once stunned, we can go up behind an enemy and uh, uh, insta-kill it, in, in most cases. Some enemies are too beefy, can't be insta-killed, have to have a bunch more damage done to them. Uh, and then this is a slightly tricky glide. There we go. Perfect. Good. Um, yeah, so this whole ascent section, there's uh, it's, it's a really well-designed like sort of section where you go into the tower, you uh, take an elevator, at least one, I think there's maybe two, and then uh, you take a bunch of escalators, you climb a bit, you, you hitch a ride with a Tangu. We're like, nah, we're not doing any of that. So we kind of uh, utilize some of the height that we can get to grapple to a Tangu that we're not really supposed to be able to get up to. Mm -hmm. um, and now we're grabbing Gust Beads, which will boost our attack power a little bit. And I'm also going to throw on the Tanuki Suit, which serves no purpose, but it looks adorable. Um, it's the reward for finding all of the Tanukis in the game. <laughs> um, so we finally found our man. Uh, we're going to watch him go into the subway. KK believes that may be where the headquarters are at. Uh, we're, we sort of needed to come up to the tower so that way we could get a better scope on our, on, the, on our man that we're chasing. And uh, we're going to try and try and follow him underground if we can. Um, so you'll notice, uh, just to explain the gliding a little bit, uh, here, for example, I waited a while before I started gliding. Uh, the reason is twofold. Uh, your fall speed is faster than your glide speed. You can like lower, get lower faster. And the second reason is there's a little stagger animation if we fall from too far, like that, what, uh, when we're gliding. It's very minor, but in the sake of saving every possible frame, uh, I hate that <laughs> that little <laughs> landing animation, and I try to I try to get as close to the ground as I can before ending my glide, so I can avoid getting it. Um, so now we're in the Shibuya underground. Uh, this is actually a really like expansive sort of area. If uh, if you're doing a casual playthrough, you end up coming back here a few times for some side quests and spirits. Uh, but we're gonna just breeze on through. We're gonna pick up some KK investigation notes, which is our only source of skill points since we can't level up. Um, and we're going to try and get as much ammo from any items we see uh, uh, it, just to see if we can charge our fire back up to full. Because we're coming up to the first boss, and I kind of want to make sure I have as much ammo as it's going to take uh, to deal with them. Um, but yeah, this, this section is just about optimizing your glides, sort of taking the, taking the right line, hitting all the glides when you uh, go for the jumps. Sometimes the game eats your jumps. It can be a little frustrating. Um, but the movement in this game can feel really good <laughs> when uh, when it's all working out. Um, oh, for sure. Like, uh, when you get, like, the really, really good glides and you just hit everything perfectly, it feels so satisfying. Absolutely, yeah. Um, so we got some pretty cool effects here. I'm gonna go for the, the super swag glide here, but I, I don't know if... Uh, I don't know if I'm super swagged out. Let's see. Oh, we got it. Okay, nice. nice. Uh, that saves like maybe half a second at most. <laughs> uh, so it's pretty pointless, <laughs> but no, uh, no, I just worth. <laughs> it's totally worth, right? I just like gliding into the boss. So this is our first boss. Uh, I'm going to be quiet for a minute. Um, yeah, so basically this is uh, Yasuo Toko, uh, he's called. And um, what Little is going to do, he's going to try to bait out a certain attack so he can like kind of perma stagger him. So at the moment you're going to see he's going to try to block the attacks, there you go, he's going to do the fire attacks, try to get him to stagger once again, not really cooperating too much, kind of block off the shield that he has, and he be getting yeah, close so to done. His shield it can be a one hit from melee, however, um, it's a bit... It's a bit of a pain to hit the hitbox just right sometimes, uh, and it feels like, especially in this difficulty, He's, uh, he's a little bit more annoying about it. Anyway, that's the boss. Um, he was <laughs> we not had, being <laughs> nice to yeah, you. He, he, was, he was being a little rude. Uh, so there is an RNG to uh, uh, ammo drops, basically. Sometimes when we break that dude's shield, we get uh, a <laughs> nuki suit. We get a, <laughs> uh, a fire shot out of it. Uh, and that's sort of what we're hoping for, because uh, we're trying to just... Every time we hit him with fire, it staggers him out of an attack animation. So optimally, right, and in uh, standard, it's a lot easier to get. You can basically just stagger him the whole fight, and, and he never even really throws anything at you. But, uh, yeah, I, I took a few hits. It wasn't anything major. I got my perfect parries pretty good. 
Um, so we're gonna climb back up and out. At this point, we have lost KK. Yes. We can't glide. Uh, we are on our own, basically. And uh, KK's been ripped out of us, and we, we have to find KK, because without him, we're kind of useless in this uh, spirit world. All we have is our, our bow. Um, in this section, casually, you're supposed to kind of stealth through um, and, and go for stealth kills on these dudes. However, that's a little slow, or a lot slow. So we're just gonna run through. Yeah, <laughs> we're just gonna run through like like these dudes aren't even here. Um, but yeah, basically, so, like you were saying, uh, story-wise, uh, KK has been ripped out of us, and that's actually because Yasuo Toga, the guy that we were fighting before. Oh my God, you almost died. I know. <laughs> um, he um, he actually was using the dead body of KK because, as you know. KK is a spirit who's inside of us, but his body is being used um, by the evil people. So he actually didn't want, um, what's it called, uh, Akito to kill him, because then he can't get his own body ever. That's why he got ripped off. Unlucky yeah. you missed the jump, but it's all good. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so grapples are kind of interesting in this game. Sometimes they don't want to cooperate for some reason. It seems to help if you like look up in sort of a 45 degree angle, but if something's a little bit taller than Akito, occasionally he'll, he'll just kind of jump into it and not grapple at all. Yeah. Um, so we're back at KK's house, and here we see sort of KK's trail. He leaves this <laughs> sort of misty spirit trail, little little gnarly, if you ask me. The and uh, me. I'm sorry. <laughs> the, the Sanuki suit is great because it appears in every cutscene. Yeah. Uh, it's uh, yeah. The uh, the cosmetics are, are pretty well done. Shoutouts to Tango for ensuring that that works right. Um, <laughs> so we're gonna follow his trail and try to get our powers back. Uh, we're coming up on a section where sometimes the enemies participate in the the easy fun strat other times they're really annoying um like i said I'm, I'm playing things a little bit safer than i would in maybe a pb attempt so we're gonna pick up some extra arrows and i do have some extra food that i wouldn't normally so should be should be chilling um good, yeah. Yeah, yeah basically this upcoming part is uh, where kk is um has gotten taken over to and uh, you can see this big yeah, like, Tory gate and it's actually like a stealth mission usually where you're trying to like be as quiet as possible be as stealthy as possible but we're gonna try to do like the little bit more brawly type where we just try to run past all the enemies uh, if that doesn't work out we probably have to kill about three of them but uh, let, let's see what kind of RNG you get here yeah uh oh I knew that was gonna happen <laughs> So now we just have to headshot these dudes. Yeah. Uh, oh, it's unfortunate because you can't interact with the next objective point until all the aggroed enemies are dead. So uh, we took care of them pretty quick. That wasn't too bad. Yeah. Sometimes I, I whiff all my shots there and then it's a nightmare. Um, so we just got a new ability. Uh, we can now wire in. That's the ultimate sync between uh, Akito and KK. So we're kind of like perfectly in tune. It slows down time. It does massive damage to enemies. And it, most importantly, it refills our uh, ammo back to full whenever we do it. So as you can see, we just obliterated all those enemies, no sweat. Um, and I actually did another trick there that's okay, it's kind of hard to see, but uh, I did what's called a wiring cancel, where halfway through the wiring, I uh, press the wiring button again, and uh, that drops our wiring meter, which is in the lower right, down to zero. However, since we then uh, take a bunch of cores from a bunch of enemies, our wiring is then charged nearly back to full. So it's kind of like a refund on the on the um, on the wiring, where we instantly get back most of our wiring ability. Uh, and that's a trick you can try in your casual playthrough if you wish. Um, <laughs> no, it's not. Come on. <laughs> Dev intended, hundred percent. True. Um, <laughs> So we cleanse this gate. Uh, now there's there's that big pillar of light, as you may have noticed, off in the distance. And KK is telling us that is the source of, of all this. We have to get there in order to figure out what's going on. So we're going to wait for a little bit of dialogue to finish, and then we're going to zip up here. We're going to hit this Tangu. And uh, we picked up a new talisman in KK's apartment, and it is called the... Uh, what's it called? Uh, it's, it's the brush talisman, right? The, I, the it, has, it has a different name. I, I just totally forgot what it's called. I call it the bush talisman. It's fine. The bush <laughs> talisman. Yeah, that's fine. So it basically spawns a bush, uh, and it, we can uh, we can hide in it to uh, kind of stay away from uh, enemies and ideally avoid their aggro entirely. Uh, we're gonna be using it a few times. 
uh, in a few spots. It's really useful in this difficulty, especially because enemies hurt a lot. Okay, all right, we got a little damage boost there, totally intended. Don't need no sweat. I was not panicking at all. Um, so this is a fun, fun little movement section. This whole game is full of fun movement section. If you if you think the gliding looks satisfying, trust me, it is. Uh, oh, yeah. <laughs> it's 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 probably like the the most fun part about uh, getting around. You just sort of you start to feel where you can uh, where you can glide, how far you can glide. Uh, we have like a I think it's like a three second glide time, but once you once you get used to it, you sort of learn exactly what the limit is on how far you can glide, so you can just sort of eyeball it. Yeah, um, exactly. You can also like extend it a little bit if you do like a melee attack uh, at the end of it. For some yeah. reason, uh, Agatha just goes a little bit further when you do that. Not sure why. Yeah. So uh, so we took a cheeky little route there. I don't I don't think that's really the way the devs intended you to go. Uh, and uh, we're gonna get to this building. Uh, there's there's really like a whole thing that the game wants us to do where we go around there and then we have to climb up and it's it's this. It, it takes a while. We're not going to do any of that. That's it's way too long. So we're just going to tang you straight up to the roof and head to the door. And fortunately, the game wants us to look for clues, but it doesn't force you to look for clues, which is is always really nice as a speedrunner because it's not a required checkpoint. Yeah. So uh, we're heading inside here. We got a few fun sections coming up. Um, I'm going to use my spectral vision, which I didn't explain before. Whenever you see me drop that little drop on the ground, uh, that highlights various objectives. So you can see we get our wall hacks, we can see uh, enemies and stuff, and that allows us to destroy uh, that corruption uh, by, by killing the core. Um, and we're going to come into here and grab some more KK investigation notes. We've been hoarding our KK investigation notes to get skill points because we can't level up. And we are now going to spend some of those skill points. So I'm going to come over here. I'm going to upgrade wind twice. I'm going to upgrade fire once, which gives us piercing fire. So we can now hit it through enemies. I'm going to upgrade our quiver size so we can hold more bows and the bow draw speed so we can draw our bow faster. Um, and now we get to absorb this little cute guy. He's adorable, isn't he? Yeah, um, he is. He's like the... Also a little this, bit terrifying. A little bit terrifying, but uh, <laughs> mostly adorable. Um, that, that thing scared me so much the first time I saw it. I was like, I don't know if I should shoot it or what. <laughs> so uh, we're going to do as many cheeky little multi-hits through these guys as we can. That was pretty good, actually. That was super good. Yeah. Um, and then we're going to finish off these guys. Oh, that works. And similar to every other section, it, the game wants you to kill these enemies to advance. We can't open any doors. We can't really interact with anything. So uh, took, took care of those guys pretty quick. They can sometimes be a problem if they don't like uh, line up correctly. There is some quote-unquote RNG to how enemies will spawn in that can sometimes work for or against you. There, there's like certain shrines where sometimes you don't have to kill any enemies at all and and like they're just completely out of position so they can't even see you. And then there's other times where they're directly in your face and attacking you as soon as you make eye contact with them. Yep. Um, so we are we are now looking for Rinko. Uh, yeah, I'm gonna do the stun trick here. Uh, Nico actually taught me this like just the other night. Um, so we wait for him to walk forward a little bit, and we can come behind him, hit him with the stun, get a little uh, mouth in our face action, which is beautiful. Um, and we're gonna come through here. This section coming up is. Uh, it's kind of like the Resident Evil 4 cabin section, <laughs> uh, if that makes sense, because it's like the faster you kill the enemies, the faster you spawn the next wave of enemies, mm -hmm. then the faster you get out of the section, right? Yeah. So um, we're going to be trying to kill enemies as fast as we can, uh, obviously, but sort of in specific orders so that uh, we can have the next set spawn. And you saw me pop another green tea there. That's just for some extra attack boost. And uh, here we go. This is the part I'm most nervous about, honestly. Nah, no, you got this. Yeah, this is basically like a cabin section, like you were saying. And the spawns are set, but how the enemies behave are definitely not set because they want to go over and basically you're doing like a tower defense uh, kind of thing here. Rinko is in the back and she's trying to do some hacker man stuff. And uh, basically we're trying to protect her for as long as possible. And by killing these guys as fast as possible, we're going to end this segment as fast as possible, basically. Uh, again, all the enemies spawn in the same spot, but if they do become super aggressive toward middle, it's going to be a 
very, very fast time. Really, really quickly. Yeah, that, <laughs> that got a little weird there. I don't know how that guy appeared there. That was uh, a little absurd. But we're dealing with it. It's okay. That guy was sprinting, by the way. <laughs> yeah, I know. I, I don't know how he made it all the way to Rinko. So we're, we're trying to defend her while she's uh, hacking the mainframe over there. And mm -hmm. uh, so basically, we're, we're trying to deal with these enemies in a ammo efficient way. So I'm going to come over here and try to stealth kill both of these. Sometimes this one aggros. No, okay. We're good. Nice. Um, yeah, and they can sometimes just turn around and hit you twice, and that's that's the end. There's nothing you can do. <laughs> uh, so it's a little little dicey throughout, and these should go down in three. And then for this guy, I have a new strat that I'm trying out uh, with him because he's a pain. So we're going to go four headshots. Oh, I think I missed that fourth headshot, and then we're going to shock, and then we're going to quick purge, and hopefully this kills him. Otherwise, I have another flame round for him. Yeah. That's what I thought. Oh, nice. never mind. I do not. Oh. It's okay. He should. Okay, good. We're good. Whew. That guy is the biggest problem in this section by far. Yeah. Uh, he, his hammer swing has like a huge hitbox. You can be kind of nowhere near it and it can destroy your day. Uh, anyway, that's the that's the Rinko defense section. That that's. I'm really glad I didn't die there. Yeah, that was that was actually pretty clean. Other than the one dude who got away and made it all the way to Rinko, that was actually about as fast as you can uh, kill those dudes. Yep. Um. So now we get to go back outside. Um. And all the while, I've been trying to reload our ammo. Just sort of like any any object I see that's not totally out of the way, I'll break it. Um. However, we are getting to another Jizo statue. So we'll be able to get full fire here, no matter what, which is useful. Um, there aren't that many Jizo statues on the route, so uh, it's hard to balance not going too far out of the way while trying to get things that help you out for later. Um, so we're going to do that. Pray to the Jizo statue. Bless. There's a dog there. I, I want to pet you so bad. Um, and we're going to head over here for uh, one of two shopping trips. Um, we're gonna head into this convenience store, talk to this adorable cat. Uh, there are cats, dogs, and raccoons in this game, and you can talk to all of them, yep. and you can feed the dogs, and you can pet the dogs, and you can pet the cats, but you cannot feed the cats, and I am very upset by that. <laughs> <laughs> it's because uh, you would own them then, and that's not cool, you know? Yeah, I know, right? Yeah. Then, then they would Who's just realistic? follow me around. And yeah, exactly. We, we army of cats, them. yeah. Um, so once again, we are barrier barriered off. Uh, we're being messed with. And we have to break these stones again. Okay, safe. That that, that Lady D can sometimes ruin my day. Um, I call them Lady Ds, understandably, she was, perhaps. She was coming for you today. Yeah. <laughs> that was super close. Hey, and we landed all our shots. So uh, there, there is a slightly faster way you can do that, but it's it's kind of risky, and you sort of just YOLO a arrow shot into the distance. Um, a lot of people who watch that are like, did you actually shoot the things? Because I didn't see them. And I'm like, no, 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 I, I definitely shot them. We made it out of the section, don't worry about it. Um, so uh, now we're kind of locked in a dialogue with KK, and uh, we're waiting for him to tell us some info. He's going to be like, you got to get a phone card, and you got to find a phone booth, my guy. But not any, any regular old spirit phone booth. It's a special one with a special symbol. Oh, so it's, it's uh, another color, he says. Yeah, it's another color. Yeah, because they all have symbols on them. Yeah. But this one's special. So uh, we're going to go find that specific phone booth. The game has you look around at like three different phone booths. It's kind of a goofy section. Yeah. Uh, we're going to just blast these. Uh, and speaking on the enemy design, uh, you're probably wondering what's up with all the students running around. Uh, the, the meaning of them in uh, sort of the Japanese folklore of it is they are built on the anxieties and fears of students. So you have uh, boys and you have girls and they're, they're running around and they're sort of, they're angry at you because they are trapped, trapped spirits due to the anxiety of, of being in school. Which is kind of understandable, I can sympathize with that. For sure. um, so we're going to come to this lady, it's the first time we've seen her, a bit of a horrific boss design. Uh, let's see if I can nail these shots. Yeah, this uh, two, one is also super terrible. Three. As like a oh, big special whip. attack where uh, it like pulls out. I, I think it like does spiky hair attack is what I call it, where like all the hair just goes everywhere. I was kind of doing it on the last part. 
And yeah. uh, if she does that, it can de just destroy you. Like, even on yeah. <laughs> easier difficulties. Um, so, anyway, I hope y'all are comfy because we're going to be <laughs> looking at the map for a good minute. Uh, there's only like two times that this happens, but uh, the game has a thing and you cannot turn it off, unfortunately. Uh, every time you open the map, it shows you all of the new points of interest you've unlocked, which, you know, in a casual playthrough, that's actually really kind of useful. I mean, maybe for the first playthrough, um, but for like, you know, the 80th playthrough, it starts to get a little tiresome. I know where all the side quests are. I know what I'm supposed to be doing. Uh, it'd be nice if we could toggle that off. But no, we have to look at all of the icons on the map uh, when we open the map. So that's why we're going to really try and minimize any sort of map opening. And keep in mind, in order to get to the skill tab, we have to open the map because there is no specific skill button. It's just you open the map and then you tab over to the skill menu. Yeah. So um, <laughs> basically, unless we absolutely need to fast travel and fast traveling is absolutely faster than running, we will avoid opening the map. Um, yeah, it's a bit of a pain, but it, it is a good uh, little hydration break or, you know, stretch break if you're <laughs> doing runs. Um, so now, now that we fast traveled all the way down here, we're going to head straight back up to the gate that we were just at. We just <laughs> needed to get that key that KK was telling us about. Uh, him, him and Rinko used to do dead drops when they were uh, detectives, and that's the locker that they used. So we head over there, get the key. Uh, that was a nice Tengu grapple. And uh, now we're on our way to discover some stuff about Rinko, because Rinko... Uh, according to KK, has some intel that's going to help us uh, find Mary and, more importantly, save all of Tokyo from this spirit world fate. Um, so we're just going to glide over here. We're going to try and land on objects so I can get some extra glides just to make things a little smoother. I don't think I've mentioned this. Gliding is faster than sprinting. So in all cases where we can, we're going to be trying to glide instead of sprint. Uh, that probably was something I should have mentioned earlier on, <laughs> although <laughs> you've probably figured it out by now anyway. Uh, so we just picked up some more KK investigation notes. That means we can put some more skill points into our wind. So now we have the fastest firing rate for wind, which is really nice for finishing off bosses. I'm going to come over here. I got that, surprisingly. And we're going to enter this house uh, full of cats. And we get to see what happened to Rinko exactly, because we're trying to we're trying to unravel that mystery. Yeah. So basically, KK uh, has been saying a little bit that he thought it was odd that you got trapped twice, and uh, he says something is up with Rinko, and then we find out here that Rinko has actually been, well, killed and taken over by one of the other uh, bad guys, as, as we call them. And uh, yeah, this <laughs> upcoming section is actually one of the coolest sections, in my opinion. Yeah, uh, visually, this this section, like, you know, if this wasn't a run, I, I could just stand around and sort of, like, look at the scenery for a while. It, uh, this game has, like, some cyberpunk influence to it with, like, the, the visual sort of graphical glitches and stuff like that. Like I said at the beginning, this is... It, it's one of the most impressive-looking games I think I've seen in a, in a long time, perhaps ever. Uh, keep in mind, I do have all the settings like way turned down just so we can maximize frame rate because uh, it, it can be a little hardware intensive. Um, so trust me, the game looks much better if you're running it <laughs> with normal settings. You know, uh, I, I strongly recommend everybody uh, check this game out. It go it's gone on sale a few times already. Um, and it's, uh, it's, it's quite a fun casual playthrough and it's also a really good speed run which needs more runners, honestly. Um, Absolutely. It, it kind of had like a very unfortunate release timing. It was like a little bit after Elden Ring. I think it was like maybe a month after or something like that. It was like, like yeah, the, the month after, like three yeah. weeks after or something like that. But and everyone was still playing Elden Ring because, you know, <laughs> yeah, big, Elden Ring big I, open world. <laughs> I mean, I, I can't blame them, but no. <laughs> it's like, uh, it, it, sort of, it sort of went under the radar. I would say it wasn't as uh, advertised as maybe it could have been. Uh, we have a cat there. Always got to look at the cat. Of course. Um, yeah, so this whole visual segment is sort of us uh, going into into Rinko's mind, sort of. We're, we're seeing her her feelings in a way. Uh, it, vi visually, it's really kind of insane. But uh, feeling very Umbrella, guys. <laughs> yeah, Umbrella. <laughs> the tie-in to Resident Evil continues. True! Um, <laughs> 
So we're gonna come over here and hand seal uh, Rinko to free free the evil from her spirit. Um, so I'm gonna do this. It's a nice little pentagram shape, and all good, totally saved. GG, everybody lives. Uh, yeah, she's fine now, right? She's totally fine, dude. Totally. Yeah, yeah um, definitely not that. <laughs> definitely not. So uh, we're still trying to get some more intel from Rinko, and uh, we all the while we're we're using our spectral vision to sort of like see these visions of uh, where past spirits have been and stuff. We can see their residual energy. Um, so there's a lot of cool like exploration stuff if you play this game casually. Use your spectral vision to help find some of those 123 <laughs> collectibles <laughs> and uh, 25 tanukis and you know 20 240,000 spirits, right? So uh, yeah, it's very good that this massive open world game gave us <laughs> gave us that tool. So I'm going to tango up here. Uh, we have two shrines that we have to clear before we are on our way to the next boss. Um, I'm gonna try and get these guys the easy way. Ooh, if they want to cooperate, good. That's Two, good. three, four, good. All right. Yeah, those guys are. Uh, it, it's kind of funny. They're they're actually like the weakest enemies in the game. However, in this difficulty, because of how uh, you can take ranged damage and it can instantly kill you if there's multiple shots heading your way, um, they are actually some of the most dangerous. Uh, this is a little skip to get past the fog and put us at the back of the shrine. You can go through the fog, you can kind of traverse it, but you can't interact with anything while you're in the fog, and you die relatively quick. So we're gonna blast this dude. Okay, that could have killed me. Uh, that was a really close dodge. Um, <laughs> so that was good. Uh, we're gonna come down here to these next group of enemies. We're gonna ignore these guys. Hopefully, hopefully we're gonna ignore these guys. Sometimes they follow me down the mountain and it's really a problem. Um, we're gonna hit them like that. Oh. oh, I don't know if I hit this guy with the fire. I probably should have. Uh, all right, and then we're gonna get her down maybe. Yeah. Okay, and I'm gonna crouch while I cleanse this Tori gate just to try and avoid aggroing. As I said, if you're aggroed with anything, you can't really interact with, uh, you can't interact with Tori gates, you can't interact with like doors and stuff. So uh, being aggroed from an enemy that we don't have to kill is very, very bad in this difficulty. Um, and now we're climbing up the mountain, heading to our next boss, which, uh, oh, Mote, yeah. Um, and I'm sorry <laughs> for my pronunciation on any of these Japanese <laughs> we <are> terms. <laughs> yeah, probably butchering all of them. <laughs> probably totally butchering it, but we're trying, man. Yeah. Um, <laughs> so we're going to head up this mountain and get as close to this door as possible so that when we come out of the cutscene, we're right by it. Um, the way cutscenes work is kind of... There, there's, there's two different ways that they handle your position in cutscenes. Sometimes at the end of a cutscene, it puts you in a set spot. Other times, it leaves you in whatever spot you were at when you triggered the cutscene. So for the most part, uh, in any of those secondary instances, we're gonna try and get as close to the next objective before the cutscene starts. So that way, you know, we can basically just mash F to get to the next part. Um, and now we're heading on down. Uh, yeah, so far, this is, so far this is actually going decent, but this boss uh, has a bit of RNG and can be a bit troll in her positioning. Um, yeah. It does, however, so this boss is kind of gimmicky in terms of like, it's a three-phase boss and you just have to get behind the, well, the giant cap you're going to see in a second and basically uh, draw out the core. Um, one caveat to this is that on Tatari, um, you actually have a way to do this faster because the boss is just a lot more aggressive, so you can actually stagger her a little bit easier. And as you just saw, KK got pulled out of us, so we're actually just playing as Akita now. We're gonna let the little do his uh, do his thing. Here. Yeah. So uh, our goal here is to stun her and then pull her tails out. She has three tails, um, and there's these explosives sort of littered around the arena, and we can use those. Oh, she's gonna be weird here, isn't she? Hang on. We got her. We got to get her to come back here. Yeah. So she can be a little. Oh. Uh. Wait. I thought we died. We did not die. That was close. Oh, hang up. No, no, no. That. Oh, dear. Oh, oh my goodness. <laughs> 
Oh, saved, dude. I thought that was going to be our first death. I was, yeah. Oh, man. I was really worried about that. So as you guys saw, the mantle thing was kind of messing with him there because he didn't want to mantle that red thing. He just wanted to yeah. hit it. But Agito had other things in mind. Okay, now we have to be careful here. Yeah, she kind of stuns you when she hits. Um, oh, I missed that. That's bad. Hang on. Backup. Backup plan. All right. Whew. Easy peasy. Everybody, just relax. Calm All down. Plan, <laughs> Chat, this was totally intentional. <laughs> Don't worry. Like uh, I that, said, that gimmick fight. <laughs> yeah, that could have gone a little bit better. I also fat fingered my escape key there real quick. Um, <laughs> yeah, that could have gone a little bit better. Her her positions are kind of random. Uh, sometimes she runs off in a random direction and uh, it causes us problems. You, that that's kind of what happened with that second one. She ran to the left when really she's supposed to walk past those vending machines, sort of towards the right side. Um, I don't, I don't think there's anything we can really, like, she's not, um, you know, uh, it, it's not positional based on where you are. It's sort of whatever AI she picked for that day. Um, <laughs> so now that we're through with that, I, oh man, I'm sweating. That was spooky. Uh, <laughs> it's okay, we are a bunch of Tory gates now. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. Now, now we have to go cleanse a bunch of Tory gates. Uh, basically, we get an objective that's uh, behind a bunch of fog. So this is a section where all the game wants you to do is cleanse a bunch of Tory gates to unveil the next objective location, so we can uh, get some next things done. Uh, I should mention, oh, and I think it's been established by now in the story, uh, we we are trying to find a way to traverse the fog to get to that giant beam of light that we saw earlier. Because there's a big wall of fog between us and that giant ring of light. And uh, we can't get through it uh, with Tory gates because there's no Tory gates along the way. It's basically the whole distance is, is just fogged up. So uh, we're trying to get a vehicle or some means of transportation to get us through the fog. Um, and that's that's what we're sort of setting up. Oh, okay, that was close. Um, <laughs> so, uh, we're gonna zip on through here. I'm gonna try and do some cheeky uh, bush strats if they work. Sometimes they don't, and I'm not sure why. Uh, it's kind of just, just whatever the, the, yeah, yeah, whatever the flavor is. <laughs> yeah, so uh, let's see. Come on. Come on, bud. On aggro. You gonna stay aggro? Yeah. Okay, that guy didn't want to cooperate. Everybody else cooperated, but that one guy, he was like, no, 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 I see you. I see you hiding in that bush in plain sight. Um, I know your tricks. <laughs> yeah. Um, so we're going to try not to... Oh, 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 oh. Help. Sorry about that. I, uh, so there's some weird camera stuff that happens here. We have to climb back up here, which is a little, little meme-y. It's okay. Yeah, it happens. Uh, so yeah, basically what happens is there's like a forced camera lock where it like turns you to the left. Usually if you just hold straight, uh, the camera won't go that way. But uh, yeah, no, got super unlucky there and got drawn that way. Yeah, it, it's sort of, it's really janky how it happens because KK is like, hey, look over there. There's like a giant off in the distance. And whatever you're doing, the game sort of rotates your camera in the direction of the giant. Because it's like, yeah, dude, you want to, you definitely want to look at that giant. But if I'm in the middle of like jumping or a glide or something like that, it redirects all your movement to that direction. Um, so, uh, we have a bit of another gauntlet uh, RE4 cabin type section coming up where we're going to have to kill enemies as fast as possible. Uh, I'm going to play it safe here for marathon reasons. I'm going to do what's called a wire in reload. Um, and this is a little complicated, but uh, basically, what we do is we hit our wire in. And then we save and we load. And as you can see, I have full ammo. However, I also have basically full wiring. So we we can get all the ammo benefits uh, from our wiring. And we get to keep the wiring. So we'll be able to charge it soon, probably after these dudes. And um, we'll have a wiring for later, which is going to be massively important. So there we go. We have full wiring again. Huge, easy peasy. Um, these guys can sometimes be a bit of a problem. I'm gonna try to make it not so. Looks good so uh, far, at the very least. As you can see, guys, uh, on the bottom right side with the orange bar that's like a, a half circle to a circle, it, it, that's where the wiring bar is. Uh, so that's yeah. What, he, what he's uh, trying to refer to. Yeah. 
little... A little unlucky here with the ammo, but you're good. Yeah, <laughs> it's a little starved for ammo in certain sections. Uh, we're going to do a quick purge on her, and then we're going to throw a bush down incorrectly. Uh, <laughs> I meant to stun her, but I accidentally threw a bush. It's okay. <laughs> and then we're going to do another quick purge, and this should obliterate her. Yep. Okay, all good. Super close, but you clutch it. Nice. And we, and we get a little extra bush there. Um, this might pose a problem later. Uh, I'm hoping it doesn't. We're supposed to have two bushes for a strat uh, later. However, I, I, I've gotten it to work with one before, so it, it should be okay. He says tentatively. Um, got this. <laughs> yeah. Throw so the one bush strat will work. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So uh, KK has told us a little secret about these uh, headquarters that they have. Uh, they have this little underground base in a garage. And uh, that's where they used to, I, I don't remember exactly what they did, but Rinko was using it as sort of like a little base of operations for their investigations and stuff. Um, KK used to be a cop before he was turned spirit. Um, so he has, he's a, uh, I forgot what they call him. They call him like a watchdog or a, a guard yeah, dog, basically. Dog. Yeah. Um, so we're going to glide down here. That's a little swag glide. I don't even think it saves time. It just looks cool. Um, <laughs> Yeah, and uh, we're basically going to head to this secret back base where we might be able to find something that can help us out with this fog traversal issue that we are having. Um, and uh, the ammo right now is looking pretty good. This is a section where it's like we're, we want to make sure we're always topped up because it's very easy to end up in a situation where you're fighting off enemies and you absolutely run out of ammo. And uh, it, it, it's... Uh, you know, there's backups. There's always backups, but the backups are not clean. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, we're really trying to avoid those as best as possible. So, uh, what we found down there, we barely saw it, is a motorcycle. But it's not just any motorcycle. It's a super spirit motorcycle equipped with a special force field, which is currently not working, um, that will allow us to traverse the fog. It's basically a fog force field. A fog field, if you will. <laughs> and um, <laughs> so we have to gather a few items to get this to get this to work. So KK is kind of instructing us where we're supposed to go. Uh, he's he's telling us we need to get a better view of the lay of the land so we can decide how we're going to handle this. Uh, this is our second and final shopping trip. Oh, we're going to talk to our cat friend. Hi, bud. Um, and. <laughs> <laughs> We're going to grab some extra arrows just for this next section. Uh, arrows won't really be a huge issue after this because uh, we're going to get a bunch of free ones. But for this section, it can certainly be a problem if you have no arrows. So uh, four shots to the face to kill these. But I like to do three and then a fire just because it's a lot harder to miss with the fire. There's another one down at the next sort of gate, like down there, but we uh, luckily avoided aggroing her. That's very rare for me. Usually I aggro her. Um, and then we're going to come over here. So there's three uh, gates that we have to cleanse for the shrine, and that'll allow us to proceed to the next area. So three arrows to the face, and then we blast her with the fire. Um, I think those take two arrows on easy, don't they? Uh, yeah, they do. I usually yeah. uh, do like push strats for most of them, or stun. Oh, strats. really? Yeah. yeah. Because that you can sense. literally just fire them once, and then they'll fall down, stun, and then you quick purge them. It's yeah. It's they do have that little stun after the first headshot where they fall to the ground, and you can <laughs> kind of get a free shot off on them. It's just it's a little hard to hit their heads because their hair is like waving all over the place. <laughs> um, Very true. So we cleanse the gates and uh, we're heading up to the big roof to get a better view. Um, and yeah, we need to use some more binoculars, guys. Yeah, binoculars. Uh, <laughs> knowledge. Knowledge. Uh, so, yeah. Uh, I don't know if you guys have noticed, but KK has repeated his dialogue about four times now. <laughs> Every time he starts talk uh, he just finished it. Finally, um, every time he starts talking, we would interrupt him with either a Tory gate cleansing or starting to attack an enemy, which interrupts the dialogue. So, um, yeah, fortunately, he was like, I, I feel kind of bad for him. I mean, he talks a lot, but, you know, it's a little rude to interrupt him with uh, things. Um, also be very weird if he didn't talk at all. Can you imagine? Yeah, it, it also, yeah, that would be absurd. Uh, so we picked up our last uh, KK notes, and we're just going to use these to upgrade our arrow capacity to max. Um, 
Very simple. It gives us 20 arrows uh, at max, which is only really a thing for one section, and it won't really come up for the rest of the run. So we're we're basically set. We're at we're at the point of you know we're locked and loaded, ready to go. Whatever the game has to throw at us, uh, I'm gonna try to get a cheeky Tengu grapple here into the fog, and then we're gonna get another one right here, down here, because obviously uh, Tengu grappling is faster than just movement because you get uh, sort of pulled directly to the Tengu, and some nice glides here. I'm surprised I got those. Very clean. Thank you. Thank you. Um, so we saw a car. And we saw a purple gate, uh, and KK was like, "That's it. That's what we need." Um, need that, so we're, need we're that car. <laughs> <laughs> need that car. So we head over to the car, and we're trying to find a turbine wheel. Unfortunately, the turbine wheel is missing, and the car has some sort of like underworld trap that teleports us to this uh, Legend of Zelda-style shooting gallery section. <laughs> um, so we're gonna pop a attack boost just because it seems to help a little bit with these guys. And then we are going to begin shooting in uh, what is basically, yeah, just a shooting gallery section. Uh, we can die here. It's extremely unfortunate if we do. I'm gonna try my darndest to make sure it doesn't happen. Um, a lot of this is just down to like timing and leading your shots. You sort of learn the attack patterns uh, of the enemies because they will start to attack you uh, the closer they get to KK. Oh, I wanted to get that headshot so bad. <laughs> um, Super close. Ooh. All right. So yeah, as you can see, they're throwing like chairs and like orbs and uh, various school supplies and I don't know. I think these throw scythes at you, but I, it's not any sort of scythe I've ever seen. Um, it looks super weird. I yeah, think. I'm not sure. I almost wish you could show it off, but yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, ooh. There okay. it is. <laughs> so, so I don't want to get hit by that. I was a little worried about that. All right. And we have these two explosives. I'm going to wait a little bit, and then I'm going to bust this one to try and hit both the girl and the ghost. Nope. I hit the ghost and not the girl. Uh, cool. That was close. So... Yeah, uh, yeah. they do give you infinite arrows here, so there's no risk of running out of arrows. The only risk in Tatari is obviously taking a few random hits and instantly dying. Um, KK has a like health percent thing here, but it doesn't really matter. I don't think I've ever, I don't think anyone, I doubt anyone has ever let KK die in this section because it takes a really, really long time. <laughs> don't say um, that. <laughs> yeah, right, yeah, I'm gonna Someone be the first. Someone in chat feels real bad. <laughs> <laughs> no, I guarantee you. It's the easiest thing in the world. Uh, so, yeah, yeah. Oh, you yeah. almost forgot. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I almost forgot. So the nice thing about that uh, huge quiver is we can reload our arrows at the end. So even though we end with like no arrows, we get a bunch to take into the next section, which is perfect because these dudes are just begging for an arrow to the face. Um, so we escape the trap. Uh, we're gonna blast these dudes. And uh, there's a phone call from Rinko. And we are going to answer it in just a moment. Oh my, why are you behind here now? That's that's crazy. <laughs> there you go. Um, yeah, there's actually another dude like behind and up the stairs, and sometimes he aggro's. It's a bit of a meme. Fortunately, we're getting pretty lucky. Uh, cool, good talk. Thanks for calling. Uh, <laughs> I, I, somebody called to tell me about my car's extended warranty or something. I don't know, man. I don't even have a car. Uh, <laughs> So, uh, we're heading up here. There's sometimes a death parade coming down. Yep, it's always there. Uh, yeah, it's a really cool feature of this game that we don't see in any of the categories. But down there is a death parade. And uh, it's a sort of a, uh, or I think it's specifically called a demon parade. Oh, but they refer to it. Yeah, they refer to it. <laughs> Yeah, uh, they refer to it as a death parade, and it's pretty cool because you get to fight a bunch of enemies in a uh, in a cool little like arena and stuff. <laughs> Casually, it's fun. Uh, in the speed run, we avoid them like the plague because uh, they they like basically suck you into the underworld, and you have to do like a ten minute fight. Uh, Casually fun, but you know, not for us. Um, Speaking of the underworld, we are now in the underworld. Uh, we went through that purple gate that we saw, and uh, we're in this like super corrupted little uh, separate world. And uh, we're looking for fragrant underworld oil, which fortunately KK was like, oh yeah, it's definitely 100%. It's in the purple. It's in the purple gate. You go to the purple gate, you're going to find fragrant underworld oil. Yeah, he just knows. So, yeah. 
So uh, we're hoping that we don't get aggroed here, but it could happen. Rage. Oh, so lucky. Oh my goodness. I okay, we're good. I, didn't see. <laughs> I know, yeah. So we throw down the bush to avoid. There's like four big spooky hair ladies there and they can all come in and aggro you and absolutely, absolutely ruin your day. Oh, yeah. um, Even if just one of them come in there, they, yeah, they will just yeah. murder you. <laughs> it's pretty much over, yeah. Uh, so now we're just going to DPS this lady down. Oh, it's pretty straightforward, as long as she doesn't kill me. Um, there we go. Optimal not to die. Oh, wait, wait, she's still alive. Hang on. I thought we had her. Oh. That was weird. <laughs> I, I could have sworn she was doing her death animation, but I jumped the gun a little bit. It's all good. We're just fine. Like seven more shots, it's fine. <laughs> oh, please. Yeah. Um, yeah, usually she goes down in... In like eight fire shots plus two wind, about somewhere about there. Uh, but that took like a ton more wind than I know. I, I think maybe one of my shots just whiffed or something. Um, you look good. I, th I think you were just super unlucky or something. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, sometimes, uh, or I've, I've been trying to figure out a way to jump on Lady D's head so we can glide to the <laughs> straight to the exit. I don't think it's possible. I'd really like for it to be possible. So if somebody can find that way, just hit me up. And uh, now's a good time to make sure you're hydrated, because we're going to be oh. looking at some icons for a minute. Um, Get your beverages is, in. <laughs> yeah. I, I know you got that water bottle on your desk, chat. Make sure you're drinking it. Your um, water bottle is so huge, by the way. You got to get the one liter. You gotta <laughs> stay hydrated, man. It's important. Um, so, yeah, at this point, we've unlocked every single shrine on the map. If you were uh, doing a completionist sort of thing and you wanted to do all the shrines and everything, uh, you, you at this point in the story, in the main quest, you have everything you need to, to go through and do every single shrine, every single side quest. Um, so we uh, obviously we have to fast travel back. That's why we pulled up the map. So we're back to this shrine, back where we started, and we're going to head back to the Shibuya Underground. Um, because uh, KK has informed us that Rinko's friend has a car that he's really into modifying, and somehow it's going to have the turbine wheel, which we will need to traverse the spirit world. I, I'm not 100% sure who's, whose connection knows what, but um, the thing that we need is in this mall. Tr yeah. Trust me. Um, there's yeah. a big boy here. He's, uh, he, he's very threatening and imposing, but... Uh, he doesn't really aggro most of the time, I say. Worried. Um, yeah, watch out, bro. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so we're going to come over here. All right, we're good. Uh, if he aggros you, you can't interact with this car. You have to kill him. It's it's really brutal because uh, those guys have insane amounts of health in this difficulty. Um, so fortunately, we get the thing from this souped-up car that we need. And uh, we are going to do the fastest fast travel that has ever fasted. <laughs> on the fast planet. Look at that, we fast traveled like 10 feet back, then turned around, <laughs> exited the subway, and now we are going to once again fast travel up here. I think I spawned in a wall, which is kind of funny. Um, sometimes this fast travel, I think because I do it too fast, fails to load the game world. Uh, oh, we didn't fall through the earth, fantastic. Good. Um, <laughs> yeah, so I, I've actually had it on PB pace where we fall entirely through the game world and we have to fast travel back to the location that we were just at because we're, otherwise we're just infinitely falling down. Um, I don't know what's up with that. I've always assumed it's because I fast travel before the map has time to load something with frame rate or whatever. Um, You're just and too we, fast, basically. Yeah, just, just too fast, yeah. Uh, so we're basically at the point of no return. Um, this is where we leave the main world map, and we are off into the sort of final section. Uh, the game warns you here, if you haven't completed certain side quests, you won't have a chance to do them. So, uh, you know, always like that feature, by the way. That's always a very nice touch. Uh, yeah. <laughs> so we have our... Our super souped up motorcycle with the ability to tra tra traverse the fog. This is one of the coolest cutscenes. It's a shame I'm going to be skipping it, but uh, basically, KK and Akito ride on that sweet looking ride uh, through the fog until we're ambushed by a dude who uh, destroys the bike, damages it. But fortunately, we make it to our destination, Tokyo Tower, which, uh, not to be confused with Eiffel Tower, uh, <laughs> looks kind of similar. Yeah. Um, and we are now heading into essentially the the boss rush 
of this run. We have three bosses basically back to back to back yeah. with a, a big old walking section in the middle. Um, this is uh, the, the shortest chapter. Uh, if you guys have noticed yeah. the, the small uh, the characters that come up sometimes and it says chapter something, this is definitely the shortest one. Yeah, also, uh, yeah, this is where we say goodbye to Rinko. Say goodbye yeah. to Rinko, everyone. Unfortunately, Rinko is gone. Uh, I'm going to make a safety save here because the game doesn't checkpoint here. And if we die during this boss fight, and it is a very difficult boss fight, um, we get sent all the way back to before this cutscene. So just in case I'm making a safety save, we're not going to die, though. No chance, right? Also, uh, arachnophobia um, warning. Just <laughs> yeah, definitely. Uh, so this is Okina, uh, big spider boss lady, as I like to call her. Um, she has a few really cheeky attacks that she can do. Um, I'm gonna take intentional damage here, which sounds crazy, I know, just so we can pop a attack boost, because that's really gonna help here. Uh, this can insta-kill us, so we have to be really careful when she gets up for that attack. That can just obliterate us completely. Um, that was a really good first core, I will say. That was so good. Um, so now we're gonna get underneath her a bit and sort of abuse the fact that we can hit this. Yeah, this looks kind of weird, but basically what you just need to know is there's a core right there that he needs to attack, and he's like kind of clipping into the model and just... Lit. Yeah, he started blasting. There we go. Yeah, just started blasting, basically. <laughs> I don't see so good, so I missed. Um, <laughs> so uh, we're, we're sort of just trying to sink as many shots as we can to try and interrupt... Oh, please don't do it. Okay, all right. That That's the really, really Ooh, scary attack. Yeah, that's the really scary one. Um... So now we're forced to use water, which is kind of annoying here, because it doesn't, as you can see, it doesn't really hit very well. Um, she should be, oh, she should be really close, though. Uh, okay. So, kind of a bummer. We have to run and get some backup ammo, um, just due to how this worked out. Oh, it's not a huge deal. It's not die, though. Uh, there we go. It was literally one shot. I knew it. Um... <laughs> <laughs> okay, wonder, there we I go. I wonder if a melee would have done it. <laughs> I, I We can't melee that core, otherwise oh, yeah. I 100% think it would have. Yeah, I totally think a melee would have done it. <laughs> um, yeah, so when it comes down to it, we can always melee a, a core if we really need to. It's obviously slow. That yeah. is the second major uh, reset point, I would say, of this run during PB attempts. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm really glad, I'm like really, really glad we were able to get that clean. It wasn't perfect, but I'll take not dying, seriously, because uh, it, it, it's, you know, you get kind of stunlocked when you get that uh, first hit from the uh, big ring attack, mm -hmm. and there's not much you can do about it once that happens. Are you going to do a wiring thing here? Before? Uh, yes, I'm gonna do it actually at the elevator because I found out a cheeky way to do it. Um, also, the second point of no return. Wrong, yeah, it is. It is actually the second point of no return, and I, it's weird because I don't think you can actually travel you back. You can't go yeah. out of here anyway. So, so it's like, are you sure? What am I gonna do? Yeah, exactly. Yeah, it's it's you're already past the point of no return, so you you know you just gotta gotta yeah. keep on trucking. You know, I, I, I think it's because there's like a shop on the side and it's like oh yeah that might be it you can buy anything but it's still there so is a weird shop. that there's two yeah. like back to back like that so we're gonna do a little uh trick where we press the elevator button but we are not in the elevator <laughs> and then i'm gonna wire in and i'm going to save and i'm going to load uh the the elevator trick is mostly for style but the wire and cancel is on purpose, so we can't enter the elevator now. Game, kind of, we kind of busted the game, uh, and we're gonna continue the dialogue as though we are in the elevator. This, it, it's just a little meme -y glitch. It doesn't really serve any actual purpose for the most part, as you've probably seen. This, uh, this runs like very vanilla in terms of uh, glitches and stuff like that. There's mostly just like tricks and small skips. There's not really any like major glitches, at least currently. Um, Little did once fall through the elevator in the hospital in the beginning of the game. Um, yeah. But unfortunately, the elevator door does not open on the bottom. <laughs> yeah, I, all it ended up in was me being trapped in the elevator <laughs> shaft and having to restart. Yeah. So it wasn't really it wasn't really a worthwhile sort of glitch or one that we would like to recreate. Um, we had so, though, for like one day. <laughs> yeah, for like one day. Yeah. So here we go, second boss in the final set of bosses. I'm gonna try and go for a little stun lock action here if I can. Um, oh. Yeah, basically oh, he's on. gonna try to do the fire one as much as possible, depending on what type of ammo he actually gets from uh, Yasuo Toko. But yeah. uh, 
every time he does the wide arm attack, you can see that's where he's either going to try to stun him out of it with a fireball attack or let him do his uh, guard shielding thingy and then do the melee attack. Also, you're yep. seeing the perfect blocking come in on the first and the second one uh, of the green attacks that he's throwing at him, and he's trying to jump the third one every time. He's doing super well so far. A little low on ammo here, so he has to use the water element Ooh, once again. Hang on. There we go. Hang on. Don't do it, bud. Just chill. Just chill for me. There we go. Yeah, uh, we got a little unlucky on the ammo drops. So, like I said, sometimes when you break that shield, he gives you a... Um, a fire shot. Other times he just doesn't. We got pretty, pretty much no fire shots on any of the shields. <laughs> I think we broke. got like two or something. Uh, yeah, so it, that that kind of slowed down the fight a little bit. Uh, there's objects around the arena that we can break for extra ammo if need be. Um, let's try and get him out of that. Yeah, nice. Uh, I don't like that big animation he does when he jumps into the air. So mm -hmm. if I can stun him out of that, I'll go for it every time. Um, there we go. And I got the fire. Huge. Um, yeah, so the perfect parrying comes into play when he does that green attack. Um, you'll usually see me block the first and the third, uh, because the second one, as long as you're jumping, never hits. Um, yeah. And sometimes the second one never hits. Uh, we need more ammo, actually. It's a little rough. You're getting no fire shots here. There's another perfect block. <laughs> There's another perfect block. <laughs> Oh my god, please. There's even another one. Even he started using the, the water. <laughs> yeah, right? Yeah, even he, he switched in, in my honor. Um, come on. Come on, bud. Oh, that was a little rough. Hang on. Super unlucky right here with the ammo drops, but... I, I am I'm kind of baffled by how... There we go, finally. Okay. <laughs> he was not dropping a fire at all, dude. <laughs> Um, we're gonna try and grab a little bit of extra ammo just from this arena right here. Yeah. Oh yeah, uh, I see someone in chat asking if uh, this uh, if this was a boss earlier. And yes, it was, but we did not finish off the boss earlier because um, KK's body was inhabited uh, by this boss. So therefore, we let it live. But this time, we vanquish it, KK and Akito side by side in this cutscene. Yeah. Uh, yeah, so I think that's this is the only boss that we fight twice, technically. In the beginning, he just has one phase. In this second uh, one, he has two phases, and he has a few different uh, variations on his attacks. But for the most part, it's the same boss fight. You just have to do it twice, you know? Um, and now we are <laughs> pressing onward for uh, seven minutes. Yeah, so if you guys have any questions anyone at all please feel free to write them in chat we can answer um, any and everything it doesn't have to be yeah. about the game but pr preferably <laughs> about the game <laughs> yeah right um yeah so basically this is a this is a big exposition dump the game is laying a lot of story stuff onto us uh i won't go into too much detail because i want everybody to play this game if you have not yet it's a, it's a really good game and I, I think it deserves more attention uh but yeah we're, we're getting a lot of information about what happened with our sister uh what happened with our parents um and th this this whole final section sort of like it, it, i want to say it's like kind of a feel bad sort of section because it it is a psychological bummer in a lot of ways what they're uh what what your sister went through and, and sort of how how everything unfolded but uh that's sort of what makes it good it's sort of it's you know it's bittersweet it's sort of beautiful um we do have so some we're getting... questions coming in actually in the middle. So, oh yeah, uh, let's do it. Uh, someone asks, uh, can you ever gain experience on Tatari? No, no you cannot. Uh, you'll notice every time we kill an enemy, it's funny that they even put that, but it says plus zero, which is like the biggest insult. It's like, <laughs> I know dude, I'm not gaining any levels, like, please chill. So yeah, we're, we're level one for the entirety of the, uh, of the run. Our only skill points are through KK investigation notes, yeah. Uh, someone else asks, can you pet and or feed the raccoons? You can, uh, no, I don't think, I don't think you can pet or feed the raccoons, no, unfortunately. Uh, unfortunately. Yeah, but, uh, they, they are pretty funny. They have some cool dialogue. Like, a lot of the raccoons have that sort of, like, uh, it, they're written as if they have, like, a, like, a Brooklyn accent. Like, they're kind of <laughs> cheeky and, hey, what are you doing? You know, like, it's, it's pretty good. Um, <laughs> yeah, I, I, I would recommend this game casually find all the tanukis it's worth it for the tanuki suit it's also just worth it for the for the cheeky dialogue that the tanukis have when you um when you find them uh yeah <laughs> for sure someone asks what is your favorite pokemon 
What is my favorite Pokemon? Um, uh, this, it's a weird one. Uh, I would say Zigzagoon, but in the shiny form. The shiny Ooh. Alolan form, I think. It's the one that's like pink and light blue. That That is like one of the coolest looking uh, color schemes for a shiny Pokemon, I think, ever. Uh, I'm so basic. Mine is Bulbasaur. I'm sorry. <laughs> well, dude, Bulbasaur is, Bulbasaur is classic. Can't go I wrong. Know. I love Bulbasaur. <laughs> so cute. Um, how are you both doing today? Also, what is your favorite part of the speedrun specifically? What is your least favorite aspect of the game? Uh, I'm doing fantastic. How are you doing, Nico? I'm doing great, man. So awesome. honored to be on, on the show and be here with you. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, dude, this is this is excellent. Um, this run's actually going way better than I would have thought. Uh, so least favorite part, probably this. Uh, this whole walking section is a bit. It's a bit slow. <laughs> if you're on PB pace this whole time, you're like nail biting because you're like, oh man, are we gonna get to the last split and and actually still have this time save? If you're if, if you're not on PB pace, this is sort of like a walk of shame <laughs> where you're like, well, I'm finishing the run anyway, but I I know this isn't gonna PB, no chance. Um, favorite part of the run, probably. Probably the tower climb, I would say. Just the movement there, when you get it right, is so smooth. There's a few extra glides that I actually didn't get when I was doing uh, the section today. Um, you, you can really like optimize the heck out of that, where pretty much every jump leads into a glide, and you're barely sprinting at all. So, um, yeah, I'd say I like that section a lot. I think my favorite aspect of the game is um, the dialogue between uh, Akito and KK. There's a one oh, yeah. particular one, but the first time where you actually jump off a building and you don't <laughs> die from the like the fall damage, uh, yeah. KK goes like, ah, even though I'm dead, it's still scary. <laughs> like, no one <laughs> yeah. likes to fall. <laughs> yeah, KK doesn't like heights, so <laughs> yeah, um, yeah. the first time you, you jump off a building, and uh, there is no fall damage in the spirit world. Yeah. Um, yeah, so the first time you jump off a building, KK is like, oh, even though I know I'm, I'm dead and that's not going to hurt me, it still freaks me out. Yeah. And uh, yeah, that's a good section. Uh, someone asked, is it only on Steam? I don't think so. I'm pretty sure it's also on Epic Games and stuff like that. Yeah, I'm not actually a hundred percent sure. I I did see that uh, there were uh, there was a sale I think on Steam for this, and I think it was like twenty fifteen or twenty five percent off or something like that. Um, and I would say at like a you know e even at a full price point, I would say this game has a lot of content. It's worth playing, but especially at a at a price like that, it's like kind of a bargain because it's you know it's this big elaborate open world game. It's set in a universe that we don't really see too much of. This sort of Japanese folklore angle is something that I think we could like I, I want to see more games exploring this because the the yokai and the spirit there's so much like built-in lore uh, to, to this to this sort of like legend stuff um, that they put into this game that it, it it's kind of like it's easy to see how you could design an enemy based around that right um, but it's also still really creative and stuff so yeah I I, I couldn't gush about this game enough really <laughs> We also have a question that says, is this a grindy game for casual play with all the map clearing, etc.? Um, I would say no. It's, uh, it's you like know, kind of what you make it, which is kind of yeah, cool. yeah. Like you don't have. Th there's definitely you don't have to clear all the gates. You could complete the game without clearing all the gates, sort of as we're doing. Or you could really go all out if you want to. You know, it gets Banjo Kazooie levels. If that's <laughs> if that's the question, if, if if is it a collectathon in some ways? Yeah, there's no getting around that. Two hundred forty thousand spirits, and you get maybe two hundred spirits, three hundred spirits per clump. Mm -hmm. um, uh, you know, you're going to be collecting a lot of spirits. Uh, my my 100% save took about 30 or 40 hours, which uh, really compared to other games isn't that bad. Um, but yeah, casually, it, it's you know. However much you want to play. If, if you wanted to, I'm sure a casual playthrough where you mostly just focused on main quests, maybe a few side quests here and there, six to eight hours, you know, it's it's not um, it's not the longest game if you're just, you know, trying to get one thing out of it. Yeah, but uh, sure. anyway, now we're in Skyrim. Uh, we're almost done with this <laughs> long walking section. Uh, yes, thank you guys yeah. for asking questions. That wasn't yeah, so you, bad. Yeah, y'all made that go by, like, really fast. Um, so... Yeah, uh, we're, we're at the end of this walking section. We've been getting our plot dumped, and KK is sort of, like, encouraging us. You know, Akito, he's he's pretty bummed out at this point. But KK is like, dude, you got to press on. You got to go, you got this, you know? Yeah, you got to do it for Mari. Yeah, you got to do it for Mari. So we're coming up to the final boss, 
And uh, <laughs> this is perhaps one of the most interesting boss designs. It borderline looks like an Elden Ring sort of thing. Um, <laughs> so we're going to be trying to land as many of these shots as we can. Uh, obviously, when it's moving around, it's a little difficult, but you kind of have to lead your shots as much as possible. Yeah, um, specifically, he's going to try to uh, land the shots on the mask because that's the only yeah. place where it actually does that. And it's basically Correct. all the bosses like combined to one boss called uh, the Amalgamation. We just clipped into it, which was kind of interesting. I've never <laughs> seen that before. Um, oh, wow. Yeah, so some of these attacks are a little rough. Oh, hey, wait. Actually, that works. Um, <laughs> I just meleeed the face. <laughs> um, so, yeah, some of these attacks are a little rough. They can insta-kill. The tornado attack in specific is the one I hate and the one I look out for the most. Uh, we're kind of stuck here. I don't... I want to move. There we go. Um, so we're going to try and take out these guys. These dudes are a little bit stronger. They're like the shadow forms of the uh, people we were fighting before. That was a good core pull there. Um, Very nice. And we're just going to DPS this guy down. Uh, the boss has iframes when he's emerging. Once emerged, we can start blasting again. I'm just going to break any items that we run past for extra ammo. Um, and we're going to go for this face, I think. Uh, I was testing some stuff in practice, and I might have a way to speed this boss fight up. I was like, I'm not, oh, I'm not going to try it for the sake of consistency, just because I want to be able to finish the run successfully. But uh, yeah, I think I have a way to optimize the heck out of this boss fight uh, at some point in the future. Please don't do it. I, that's a weird attack, man. That was a very not weird seen one. that one. I've seen that one uh, once, but uh, that wasn't my casual playthrough. But I didn't know what I was doing. <laughs> Okay, good. Please, so just die. Oh, man. <laughs> we are starved for ammo here. This is kind of annoying. Okay, uh, we are going to do a... Yeah, we're going to do a wire in after this next phase. But I'm sort of trying to save it. I might just pull it. I might just pull it, honestly. Maybe. There we go. Okay, we're good. Whew. So the boss gives you a full reload every time you destroy a face. So that's kind of what we were looking for there. So I'm going to spam as much fire as I can, because we're going to hit our wire in, and we are going to reload all of our ammo anyway. Uh, why can't... Why can't I move? Hang on. It's the top. That, that was a little worrying. Wait, no, that wasn't uh, the talk. That was weird. <laughs> yeah, no, I was just, like, stuck there for a second. It was kind of odd. Uh, so now we have full ammo, and we have one face left, and I've actually already damaged it quite a bit, so this shouldn't be too bad. Uh, time will come up when I skip the final cutscene. I'll let you guys know. And uh, just a word of warning, this next cutscene always stutters a little bit on OBS. I think it's just due to the volumetric fog effects. They look beautiful, but they, uh, they absolutely burn my graphics space. card a little bit. Yeah. <laughs> so uh, just a word of warning, do not adjust your device. It, it will go away on its own shortly. Um, but yeah, that's the final boss. We are, we are nearly done here. Deathless um, run, by the way. Deathless, I know, dude. I can't actually believe that we pulled that off. Um, yeah, so we're just going to look at the ground here. Sorry for any frame drops. Um, the game wants you to walk here. There's like a 30-second walking section. You don't actually have to walk. I found out you can just stand and stare at the ground, which is perfect because otherwise my frame rate uh, takes a huge nosedive. Um, yeah, so this but, is where you do the victory lap when you know you got a PB. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Pop off. <laughs> the subs um, come in. <laughs> So when I skip this next cutscene, that'll be time. So probably about, uh, it's going to be three, two, one, time. Nice. And that was, brother. thank you, dude. That was Ghostwire, any percent Tatari difficulty. Um, I was so nervous going into this, but it actually went amazingly well. I'm going to see what our in-game time was. Uh, 124.34. You. So uh, minus a minute, that's 123.34. That's, that's, that's like... 30 seconds away from my PB. That's really, really good. That's um, so good. <laughs> that's really, really good. Um, thank you, everybody, for hanging out. Thank you, Ecdysis, for letting me showcase this run. Um, I've been trying to reinforce it. I'm trying to sell you guys this run because I, it doesn't really have too many active runners. It has maybe like four active runners, I want to say. Uh, the game was kind of overshadowed a little bit by Elden Ring, perhaps. Uh, if you see this game on sale, if you thought the run looked interesting, anything like that, feel free to get into it. There's a Discord for the speed run. You can always follow me on Twitch. I stream pretty much every day. 
You can ask me any questions you want. I'm always entertaining questions. Um, but yeah, that's that's the run. Uh, thank you, Nico, for joining me. Nico, you got any final words, man? Oh, thanks for having me, man. And uh, yeah, shout outs to the Ghostwire community. Shout outs to the mods. Uh, shout outs yeah. to Dices for having us. We appreciate it, man. Yeah, thank you so much, man. As well, Nano, if anyone wanted to find you on Twitch, where can they find you? You can find me at twitch.tv slash Nittle. It's spelled exactly how it is on the screen. I'm going to say down there on the left, right? <laughs> I'm not sure where it is. It's somewhere. Uh, but uh, yeah, I, <laughs> if you guys want to follow me, it would be very much appreciated. I hope to see you down there. Take care of yourselves. All right. Uh, we're going to be going on to the next game. Thank you both very much. And uh, while we set that up, uh, we're going to be going to a quick break. It's time to stand up, touch your toes, uh, not die of blood clots. That's always a good thing. <laughs> uh, really quick before I do that, though, as I mentioned, that Game is Done Quick Highlights is a channel that features highlights of our GDQ Hotfix shows. Use the exclamation mark highlights command to learn more about these highlights. I'll be right back. All right, we are back from the break. Welcome back, everyone. Hope you all had a good break. And hope you enjoyed Ghostware Tokyo. Uh, it was a game that released earlier this year that, as was mentioned, did not get a lot of love with all the Elden Ring hype, but I thought it's, I think it's a pretty neat speedrun, and I hope you all enjoyed it. It also fits well into the theme of today's show, which I guess is the whole uh, really tall lady. It was a fun way of re-adding in RE Village and trying to take a look at that, because after all, RE Village is actually, well, it celebrated its one-year anniversary a couple weeks ago, I think, so it's been about a year since we got that game. That's a pretty big release in the horror community, so I hope you enjoy this run of Resident Evil Village featuring Catlink. Take it away. Hello, everybody. My name is Catlink, and uh, yeah, we're going to be running RE8, RE Village, whichever you wish to call it, and with me on commentary today is Captain Ezekiel and Niddle, if you guys want to introduce yourselves. Hi, Hi. I'm Captain Ezekiel. <laughs> Hi, I'm Niddle. <laughs> I, I, I ran the Ghostwire. <laughs> yeah, we, we have the Ghost Ride Runner with us. It's great. Uh, but yeah, we're going to be doing New Game Glitchless on Casual. Uh, and we're going to start the run in three, two, one, go. Good luck. Good luck. Thank you. Thank you. All right. So the first addition to uh, Resident Evil 8 that RE7 didn't She's have is Cutscene Skip. Woohoo! She snarled. Bye, Mia. Bye, Mia. <laughs> Definitely the better Imagine of quality of life changes. Like especially hey. when it comes to speed running, is the ability to skip cutscenes. It's, Imagine it's a fifteen definitely... minute intro. Yeah. <laughs> Imagine. Like Imagine two and a half minutes before you can even do anything. <laughs> yeah. So that's one nice thing with Village uh, is definitely Almost getting to there, skip right? the cutscenes. Uh, unfortunately, we still have a little bit of a long intro uh, with very slow walking which is fine. Uh, it's just the one part where we get to go into Winter Wonderland and, uh, you know, walk at a snail's pace. It's, it gives me Resident Evil 7... <laughs> Resident Evil 7 vibes of just sitting around and waiting. <laughs> All right. But at least with new things that came up with this run, uh, before there used to be a thing called Snow Walk. We no longer do snow walk anymore. Uh, if you don't know what that is, it's, it's fine. It's basically something that caused carpal tunnel. <laughs> uh, basically spamming W to make yourself go faster in this section. Uh, we decided uh, as a community to get rid of it just because it, it, it was going to cause more problems and we wanted to keep the run fun and not have to worry about people, you know, breaking their wrists <laughs> for a world record. <laughs> Yeah, snow walk was was brutal when it was found. It was it was discovered that I think it's at like a certain BPM. I can't remember if it was like hundred and thirty or something like that. But if you if you rhythmically tap W, you'll uh, you'll stop and restart Ethan's running animation, uh, which actually speeds it up pretty tremendously. It's like a thirty or twenty five second time save if you did it perfectly all the way from here to the uh, house. And with resetting this game, that's a that's a finger breaker for sure. Like you do two resets and you're out. You're tapped out. <sighs> Oh, oh, oh no, oh no, oh no, yeah. one, oh no, one second. One second. Err, oh, come on, Gabe. <laughs> Give me a moment. Did Speaking of resets. <laughs> uh, my game, oh, oh, no, we're good. We're good, we're fine. We're not fine, never mind, hold on. I'm gonna wait. We were just talking about it. Yeah, too. our... 
Uh, no, it's fine. <laughs> there's, there's this issue with Village recently that all the runners are feeling. We're not quite sure what Capcom did, but some patch did something where the game is in incredibly unstable at certain points, and it's always the same points, it feels like. Like that freeze catch just had right there, I've had like twice as well. Um, where the game, it drops frames, and sometimes it just drops a tremendous amount of frames, and it locks up like that. It actually locks up your whole computer, and it's Yeah, like it's ridiculous. like everything, everything freezes. It basically it just crashes your computer almost, which is, I don't know what they did or what's causing it. It's very unfortunate, but uh, thankfully we got it at the beginning, and it doesn't happen again. <laughs> <laughs> I, I can live with uh I can live with one stutter. Just uh please no PC crashes. I was I was complaining about that earlier. I was like, all I want is the game to just not crash. <laughs> uh, oh hey Ethan, that's a nice hand you got there. <clears throat> would be a shame if something were to happen. Yeah, it would be a shame if uh something bad happened to that hand of yours, buddy. <laughs> All right, so we're still going to be walking at a little bit of a snail's pace here uh, until we finally get out of this house. Basically, it's just this spooky, scary basement. Ooh, what could happen? Ooh, what's in here? Why would we check this? I have no idea, but hey, there's a rat. <laughs> so they could hit you with the jump scare. Yeah. Oh, yeah, this is a small jump scare central in here. Yeah. Wouldn't really be uh, an RE game without an intro like this. Yeah, the slow-paced walking intro always kind of sets it up for for uh, for the spooky. Um, yeah, it's kind of interesting. You can skip that little uh, animation, the jump scare where the roof collapses in on uh, New Game Plus. I don't I don't think anybody's ever done it on New Game, have they? Uh, I think people were trying when the game first released. We were trying to figure out if we could skip that on New Game, but it, it just was super inconsistent and. Yeah, there's Nobody one person wanted... who showed a video of it, and it, it got replicated one time by timing a quick turn and taking the most perfect line you've ever seen in your life to be able to get it, but I've never been able to recreate it. Yeah. And right. retries. Retries, yeah. So uh, if one of you would like Where to explain retries, go I? for it. Yeah. yeah. That's all you know. Uh, yeah, so uh, similar to RE7, actually. Uh, there, there are certain points where the game will make a checkpoint, and the checkpoint that it makes is actually sort of further along or in a different spot from where you actually are. So uh, in a few spots, we can retry to uh, actually put ourselves at that at that later point. And since since it made the checkpoint and our position has changed, we can actually save a few seconds. Uh, some are bigger than others, I would say. There's some like micro ones that... I know Zeke does for world record purposes that I don't even know if my hard drive can load the game fast enough because <laughs> those are definitely hard drive dependent. Um, yeah. Yeah. There, there's some like 0 0.1, 0 0.2 time saves, but uh, the, the one that Kat just did is probably like three or four seconds. It's it's decent. Yeah, it's, it's probably the biggest one I would imagine. Yeah. The Moreau one is also kind of big. Ah. Oh. Unlucky. <laughs> Mr. Grabby Hands. My goodness. I hear it. All right, well, <laughs> the game is just really trying to kick me down. It's fine. <laughs> it's fine. We have to take damage anyways, because uh, in this section, we will be taking purpose damage, as in uh, we we're basically going to let things just beat on us. Uh, there is a thing called D8 in this game. Uh, what is that? That is difficulty adjustment. Essentially, what it does is that the better you do, the harder the game gets. The e the worse you do, the easier the game gets. Yeah. Uh, so the game sort of, if you take damage, if you're uh, not playing so hot, if you die, uh, the game will actually uh, make enemies easier. Basically on a scale, there's like sort of a background number. And uh, we manipulate that in this first section especially to sort of set ourselves up with a low DA so that way everything is easier. We can kill some bosses faster. Um, and this is the lovely Lycan raid. Uh, Zeke, take it away, dude. Yeah, so the Lycan Siege. Okay. Uh, the Lycan <laughs> Siege is a very uh, interesting... Uh, one of the most complex parts of the game. I would argue the most complex part of the game that took us a long time to figure out. It kind of happened in waves, so the Lycan Siege is, is a time-manipulatable event where basically 
um, if you try to cheese the Lycan Siege by like standing, uh, sitting on a ladder, for example, it actually pauses the timer of the siege. You have to continue. You have to be outside of a house. And you have to be running around for the game to like progress time here. Uh, yeah. And it's it's pretty not forgiving in that regard because we all tried to cheese it for the longest time. Oh yeah. I thought we had something with the stairs or the ladder for a while, and I was like, oh, wow, this is great. We can just sit here. No. <laughs> no. Yeah. Uh, it was actually pretty uh, fun how we found out about DA in this game. Uh, Zeke and I were, you know, we were labbing out the game, and for some reason I got through the siege a lot quicker than he did, and we realized that I was taking more damage, uh, which is very odd, but yeah, it, it that's... Are you going to fight? Are you going to fight me? Fight me? Fight me? Fight me? Yeah, these are... Uh, um, but yeah... Go ahead. Oh, yeah. So these, all these lichens are on hit timers. So uh, every other hit should be a grab. Um, and each lichen has its own set timer. So you're operating on, like, a global lichen hit timer and an individual lichen hit timer. That's why, like, you'll get grabs and sometimes you'll just get hit and it's just damage. And basically what Kat's doing is she's just getting herself low as possible, waiting for... Uh, a very uh, handsome lichen named Urias to spawn. Um, and when Urias spawns, it means part two of the lichen siege is happening, and that's when Kat's oh, gonna go uh, get ready to make some heals. Because unique to RE8, that isn't in the other titles, is healing yourself reduces your DA by a dramatic amount. It's the most oh, yeah. that you can get. It's like 200 plus. Yeah, it's pretty crazy how much it uh, dumbs down your DA. Are you gonna... Yeah. In RE7, actually, it didn't. It, there was no. There, there was DA, but uh, healing didn't affect it at all, which was kind of weird when we discovered in Village that healing like slam dunks your whole DA. So by the end of the Lycan raid, for the most part, most people are at basically zero DA, which means that we could get, I don't know, like 30% through the game while on the lowest rank. So enemies are easier. Uh, bosses have a lot less shots to kill. Um, basically sets us up for Moreau way early on, is, is what we're doing. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Unfortunately, because of that stutter, uh, my timing on the Lycan Siege is going to be all sorts of wonky, because apparently <laughs> I am uh, down 24 seconds. <laughs> yeah, oh, no. The stutter, the stutters are, when, when it locks up like that, the timer will like try to catch up, and it'll zoom ahead by like 20 seconds, but you will still be in the same spot because it'll freeze, so... Yeah. Right. Um, the the in-game time, uh, I should mention, so uh, Capcom couldn't really provide us with a working timer, so fortunately the wonderful people who made the auto-splitter and the load remover, uh, that's how the run is timed on PC. It's uh, basically cutscenes and load time doesn't count. Um, Can you stop killing everything? Urius. <laughs> yeah, so, and uh, also worth mentioning, Urius killing enemies raises your DA. So the game thinks that Ethan is, like, super good at the game because <laughs> Urius is obliterating these dudes. Yeah. There and that's go. the Lycan Siege. Uh, Arrow to Dany. A lot of it is just waiting around for hugs and uh, hoping that the Lycans will cooperate and give you that. But <laughs> sometimes they just like to sit and stare at you for a while, and you're like, "Can you just, uh, <laughs> can you just do damage to me? Just hit me, hit me one more time, one more time." <laughs> All right. It's pretty good. I mean, your DA has got to be super low. Uh, well, one thing about uh, DA um, is that DA operates in ranks. So there's there's a set DA number, which uh, in casual goes from zero to 1999, and then ranks are dependent on the 1,000 mark threshold you meet between. And uh, each per each level you're lower, like zero being the lowest, increases your damage dealt uh, and reduces enemy damage dealt. Uh, it, however, does not affect health pools. It's a common misconception is that people think that DA changes health, but it doesn't. It only changes your damage. Uh, which is why in Village of Shadows, it's at DA like 18 or something ridiculous. And I mean, it's like 8,000 or something like that. So there's no point in changing the DA yeah. at that. It's, it's basically kind of like a new game professional for RE4 where it's just, it's not more consistent, but you know, DA is just, it's at a flat rate. So you might as well not even mess around with the DA at that point for RE8 anyways. Or RE4, it's just a static DA at professional. Mm -hmm. Anyways. Yeah. Oh, there you go. Hug time. Whee! <laughs> All right. 
So many hugs. I know. I'm just very fond of the hugs. All right, so we're going to grab this uh, key here. Oh, pausing, we should explain that too. With that oh, else. yes. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So, uh, so the reason why I pause on drawers opening is because the game is trying to load in the item. So... Pausing the men- or like pausing to the menu allows the item to load in and you can grab it a lot faster, whereas if you weren't to pause the game, you'd have to wait for the drawer to essentially open all the way and then the item will come up. Mm. This yeah. also isn't simply, uh, this, this isn't unique to items. It's also uh, something you'll see in elevators. Capcom did a thing with this game where they hid load times. Uh, smart, smartly so, this is how you should do it, is elevators when you're going up and down in this game, certain elevators are actually loading in areas. So it'll take longer if you're loading slower, um, but we pause the elevators to kind of bypass this and not lose time for it. Um, yeah. And it kind of, it's kind of the same logic that's applied to like opening up items and getting them out by pausing so the game can just load it faster. Yeah. <laughs> There's also some uh, menus. Oh. I guess this leads to the castle. There's also some menus that are uh, they load a lot slower, uh, specifically like door menus. There's only, I think, one door menu that takes a while, so you have to like pause to let it load, and then you can open the menu uh, because sometimes it will take a while to load the items in the menu for some reason. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's weird. Hey, you had good crest RNG, though. It was, it was all right. It was all right. Got a little too close to the door there, but it's fine. It's fine. <laughs> <laughs> It is a shame you can skip cutscenes in this game, only for this cutscene. This is the greatest cutscene ever, but it's a this shame we my, have to skip it. My wrist resting cutscene. Such a good one. This is basically if you haven't He's played Ori Village. This is where you get introduced to all the lords like Moreau, Donna, uh, Lady Dimitrescu, and Heisenberg. And it's such a good cutscene. It's. Yeah, it's it's definitely there's two cutscenes in this game that I usually uh, allow to play through, not all the way to the end, but for a little bit, just because a I like them and b my wrists are terrible. <laughs> so that one is uh, definitely one of my favorites for sure, because you just get to see all the all the cast of characters. The uh, the behind the scenes for how they did the mocap on that scene is is also great because you get to see. Uh, sort of like their exaggerated movements were translated pretty perfectly to the in-game models. So yeah. You, it's, it's it's pretty, uh, you know, Angie, cartoony. Uh, <laughs> Paul Roach, uh, Angie's, like, the mocap for Angie is just so funny because <laughs> she's trying to replicate the doll's movement, but, like, also pretend to be very, very short. <laughs> yeah. Ah, so funny. You're you're hilarious, Heisenberg. <laughs> what a fun joke. This this <laughs> game has some of like the best voice acting I have ever experienced. It's so if you haven't played this casually, you're doing yourself a disservice. You really should cuz it's like some of the highest quality just video game I've ever seen <laughs> ever. It's so good. Like there's a reason there's so many cutscenes is cuz they're just also like they're like movie quality. Yeah, very quotable too. Oh yeah. Yeah, the, the voice actors uh, and actresses all did a fantastic job, and they're all super sweet too. Uh, Niddle, Zeke, and I all uh, actually got to do a race once with some of the voice actresses uh, commenting while we were doing a race, as well as with uh, Marforia. Um, that was like a really good time and really cool to get some insight on how the game was, you know, created on their on their view of things and stuff. And it was just a really cool experience. But yeah, the voice actors for this game are all really good people. Definitely. <laughs> all right, now it's time for a castle for the tall lady. The moment we've all been waiting for. <laughs> Rose be here. Big vampire. Big queen. We love her. Here, she has some... Everybody yeah. wanted this section to be like 90% of the game, right? <laughs> yeah, that's what we were all hoping for. We were all hoping for just nothing but tall ladies and, you yeah. know, vampire queens. But uh, unfortunately, that that ends pretty quickly. But it's okay. We also get, you know, Heisenberg, Moreau, Donna, Angie. Yeah. Oh, and if you're watching, you'll soon learn... 
Capcom hates Ethan's hands. <laughs> yeah. They hate his hands. I, I don't know what it is about Ethan's hands, but they just have a grudge against his hands. Like every two seconds, they're doing something terrible to his hands. Yeah, like the first 30 minutes of this game, his, he like goes through some serious hand trauma. But don't worry, he has his pixie juice to help him out. Yep, got some dumb pickle noon. juice. <laughs> I like how we all have our own different name for it. <laughs> you yeah, call I, it ca I call it pixie juice. Yeah, I call it Mountain Dew. I call Mountain it pickle Dew? juice. <laughs> pickle juice. Delicious. Mmm, pickle juice. Mmm, <laughs> yummy. <laughs> Delicious. Oh, hey, look, rats. Yeah, so the, a lot of the castle is a, just a big portion of point A to point B. Grab this item, go here, place that item, go grab another item, shoot some stuff, you know, the normal things you'd do in a castle, right? Yeah, absolutely. Exactly. <laughs> uh, I would say a lot of the puzzles in this, usually it's like you don't really need to go too far to get the puzzle item, which is, which is actually really convenient, you know, so in, in most cases... If you reach a door that is locked, you probably already have the key to it if you're at that point, you know? So uh, we grab the maroon eye, and now we're just going to pop it right in here, because where else would you put it? Yeah. And, uh... <laughs> <laughs> oh, really? String you up. Slice your jugular and just watch. Ficking alive, dead, which would you prefer? I think uh, alive would be nice. <clears throat> yeah. Maybe this is <laughs> so. This is the, these are the daughters. If you're not, if you don't follow the story, if you're not familiar with it, this is one of the Dimitrus daughters. The idea of the whole castle, the whole objective is oh, oh. tall lady. Hi, tall lady. Bye, tall lady. <laughs> okay, carry on. <laughs> That's Lady Dimitrus. You have we to basically the idea is we have to get through all the daughters to eventually get to Alcina, which takes a a good amount of time uh, getting through all this. But each daughter. Uh, is different in the way you do the fights. Uh, and you'll be seeing Cat coming up to one of them uh, very shortly. Uh, uh, blink and you'll miss it. You will miss it if you blink. Which one is one? This isn't a... Uh, is this Bella? I think it's Bella, yeah. I think the first one's Bella, and then it's uh, Daniela, and then Cassandra, or something like that. You know what's annoying? I just looked this up, like, like not an hour ago or like two hours ago before this run, and I totally forgot the order of the uh, daughters. The only yeah, way I you can forget. identify is by their gem on their neck, I think. Yeah. yeah. And their hair color. Oh, yeah, that all too. All this mess. I can't believe Cassandra caused all this mess either. Crazy. All right, you die. <laughs> And that's, uh, that's Bella. Ooh. We shoot, uh, so the reason why I shoot her at the end there as soon as she stops moving is it does open the door quicker. If you don't shoot her as soon as she stops moving, the wait time on the door can be a little bit longer. Yep. That was like, oh, I was so certain I was being trolled by everyone when they, when they were like, yeah, just shoot the stone and it breaks the stone faster. I'm like, aha, good one, guys. For the longest time. And it turns out it's true. If you shoot the daughters when they turn to stone, it will actually break them earlier. Yeah. And that mm -hmm. works for all three of them, actually. Yep. All right. Yeah. There's another pause buffer for the key. Um, yeah. Anything, basically anything you have to get into that opens, uh, yeah. you usually want a pause buffer for it. You want the tour? No. Hmm. No tour. <laughs> that shotgun shot there is actually interesting. When uh, when I when I first found that, uh, we didn't think you could do that because you, you can't actually damage the daughters uh, at all unless you're in a no. fight and you like expose them with cold air. Uh, but it turns out if you shoot a daughter, uh, I, I did it out of frustration because I just wanted to find a way to get it through her. <laughs> and it turns out if you shoot them, they actually like spread out very slightly. They kind of like it, like turn into flies a little bit and actually lets you run straight through them. And that was perfect for that scenario there. Yeah, it uh, at least helps get you through that door a lot faster just because you do have to do a bit of a... It, it, basically, if you don't shoot her, she can grab you and that can get really annoying and obviously cause a lot of time loss. So we... We yeah. usually just shoot for good measure. She's the, uh, Danielle's the FPS destroyer right there. Because if you get grabbed <laughs> by her and the flies are there, your computer is going to have like a, 
Heart attack. Yeah. All right. What the hell? Five in her basement. Yeah, this cat's yeah. basically gonna go through this and aim to shoot these bodies that are under the water. Um, she hits that first one because if you shoot them, the bodies become intangible, and you can walk through them. But they're really hard to hit, as you can see. <clears throat> and another tech also used in RE7, uh, FPS. So uh, when we lower the FPS to 30, when we limit it to 30, uh, it actually makes Ethan kind of slippery. His hitbox becomes a lot uh, a, a lot more slippery. We, we like to say he was dipped in a vat of butter. Uh, <laughs> that was that, That's what was popularized as the equivalent. Uh, but yeah, all you need to know is 30 FPS will allow you to uh, get past enemies. Yeah. Basically, if you're in a really tight spot right. where the, an enemy's body blocking you, you can simply just do a 30 FPS and you squeeze right through. Yeah. Very simple. It's a fun party trick you can try. Yeah, it's 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 really nice. <laughs> Funnily enough, the only thing it doesn't work on in this game is actually Lady D herself. She, there's something about her assets that make her really hard to squeeze around. <laughs> Yeah, there's uh, she she has a few moments. Uh, sometimes you can use 30 FPS to squeeze by her, but she 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 likes to make it a little bit difficult. Yeah. So we're gonna do a retry here because we we don't want to wait for the door to open. So we just want it to be open now. And there we go. Uh, we use that for certain doors. Some doors allows you to do that. Some doors not so much. All right, hello, Lady D. I'm gonna go around. Thank you. Oh, Ethan lost Grab his hand. Grab my again, hand. Guys. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Missed the cutscene, but he lost his hand. The way it happens is like an anime, like samurai slice, where it gets cut off, but there's like that three second delay. Oh. Are you kidding me? Oh no. Not again. It always happens here too. Yeah. Right. It's I've this, had it here this actually. Spot too. Yeah. 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 One second. <laughs> I don't, Still with us. Cut. I don't know why this is happening now. When I was practicing, it was fine. Okay. Cool. That's. Very, oh, very fun. Thanks, Lady D. Off of my head. I'm about to lose my head right now if you kill me here. Turn back. Oh, no. <laughs> Unlucky. Can I? No. That's very frustrating. Uh, one second. I don't even think I can get by her here. Can I? Excuse me. There you go. I, I apologize, everybody. That's, uh, that usually Just doesn't happen. Just Capcom things, yeah. <laughs> yeah it's, that usually does not happen. Just I an extension being. of what we saw at the beginning, where, like, that spot is also, like, it's, it's not even a joke when I say that identically, that exact same spot has happened to me as well. That's starting <laughs> running the game these last, this last month or two. It's, it's uh... It, I, it's we not don't know why. There's like nothing you can do about yeah. it. Basically, it's a reset if it happens, which sucks. That is true. Yep. And yes, uh, like we were saying with the uh, live split, so the way the run is timed, uh, we use uh, the load removed IGT. For whatever reason, uh, the game doesn't come up as loading or any sort of like pause state for the for the timer. So that does waste time on live split. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, it really does. It's honestly that that. One right there alone lost me 20 seconds. Yeah. <laughs> like, little, it, little it can brutal. get really bad like that yeah. uh, when it does happen. That's the second time it's happened. Hopefully it doesn't happen again. It seems it might to be, be the most prominent at the early point of the game. Like, Castle and Before is where I typically see it the most. Um, so I'm praying for getting you. a little bit of a micro stutter. I might have to close some things or change something. Two, three, four, five, yeah. six, seven. Nice. Piano master. I love this song. Ding. Do you like it because it's short and then yes. it's over and then we're out of here? Yeah. Yep. <laughs> Not Moonlight Sonata, but it'll do the trick. Yeah. Well, there's all these pianos uh, in RE7 and we never get to play them. I know, right? Excuse me, ma'am. So this is Daniela. That, uh, is our second l the little daughter here. So you, you can't be serious. I am serious, actually. A dream. This is a dream. Nice. Easy peasy. Yeah. All right. Uh, blink and you'll miss her, and she's gone. Uh, 
Uh, we were going to shoot her when she stopped, right about there. Box. Get through the door, and we're Perfect. done. Yeah, she, she has uh, that big wavy dress, and fortunately it all counts as a hitbox, even though realistically her legs are, you know, probably only a small portion of that. So uh, the trick with her is you just kind of crouch and blast, and she always goes down before your last shotgun shot, assuming you're hitting her. <laughs> that was actually a really yeah. fast uh, bell room. Bells. Yeah. yeah, that's... Yeah. That is so much harder than it looks, guys. I don't think you understand fully how <laughs> awful that room is. Yeah, the global cycles, dude. Yeah, it, it's global cycles, and uh, the hitboxes are questionable at best. Yep. Yeah, that it's especially the swinging bell. It will either be exactly where you need it to be, or it just it just swings forever into nowhere. Yeah. Or the half swing where it goes up like it's going all the way and then it just comes back down. Yeah. Yeah. So similar to the last one, just blasting. <laughs> the uh, yeah. the lore behind this, in case you guys are aware, is they're basically made out of like bot flies. The the daughters are, and the flies basically just hold them together. And when you introduce cold air, it kind of makes them leave. And then you can shoot them. Crazy witch. Yep. Yeah. So that's why sometimes you'll see us shooting windows or shooting uh, or breaking open doors or walls so that way the cold air basically kills them. All right. Excuse me, Lady D. My favorite line. Die of bloodline of how Stomatresk is done in by the likes of you. <laughs> <laughs> the banger line is so good. I love that line so much. It's the best line. <laughs> uh, but yeah so that that's all of the daughters we finished them all they're all done for uh lady d is very upset fair enough i would be too uh but yeah so now we're gonna go grab our sniper i did a little bit of menuing beforehand so that way we can easy grab the sniper and not have to do any tricky menuing there uh, because if you do not have space in your inventory, the game will not auto Tetris. You have to Tetris it yourself. Uh, so it will pause the game and be like, hey, you don't have space for this. Would you like to make space? And you're like, well, then I guess I have no choice. Uh, so I do a little bit of menuing beforehand to not have that happen because a pop up will come up and it just wastes a lot of time. Yeah, coming from, because all three of us come from RE7 and. We, like, one of the biggest hurdles and adjustments was the inventory in this game. So we routed it in a way so we just almost never have to go in there. Because it is, the RE8 inventory um, casually is fine, but when you're trying to speedrun, it's very counterintuitive. Okay. Uh, I, like Kat said, it doesn't auto Tetris for you. The confirmation key bindings are don't really make sense. And if you do pick something up, that would fill your inventory and it doesn't let you do it you have to not only read tetris but you have like two separate inventory screens to do it with and it's very slow and clunky so um yeah that's why doing that inventory that she did earlier is actually going to set her up for the entire run so she doesn't have to worry about it later mm -hmm. yeah definitely closer to the re4 inventory than the re7 um where re7 yeah. we can just inventory during downtime but this is like, you know, it's guaranteed time loss every time you have to look at your inventory. Nice one. Whew, that was, I always get nervous about that one. That one's hard. So how do you guys remember the masks here? Scooty Pub Jr. Uh, Scooty Pub Jr., right? Yep. I just remember going two up at all, all two up and three up. Oh, some, see, some of them. You're too, to that's too logical. <laughs> you have to come up with a ridiculous <laughs> acronym that's almost as hard to remember as the actual order. So sorry, <laughs> I used to struggle remembering it until I heard Niddle say Scooty Puff Jr. I'm like, that is brilliant. Because <laughs> it's SPJR, right? <laughs> it just got me good. <laughs> yes, yeah, see, I, I just remember it by muscle memory at this point. <laughs> well, see, Cat, Cat's smart. I'm out here like... You don't got time for that. Scooty Puff Jr. Crazy mnemonics, so yeah. <laughs> All right, so I'm going to take out my sniper here so we can use it for Lady D. Yes. Looks like you're outside. All right, time for Lady D. So Lady D is pretty simple. We're just going to shoot her there so she goes into the air quicker. We're going to make this gate go up so we can grab the items that we need behind the gate. So Lady D continues going into a circle here. So we're going to wait for her to come over here and 
shoot her about three or four times to bring her health down. Yep. Yeah, this fight is relatively scripted in terms of what Lady D does during her phases, but it's sort of important that we get her to specific health thresholds for her to go to her next phase. Um, yeah. So yeah, there's and, a bit of a setup here. Yeah, and so I'm going to be using these two pipe bombs real quick after she breaks down this wall and she's about to go fly. I'm going to do them very, very quickly and then shoot her with the sniper to get the optimal amount of damage. This is one of those fights where the addition of the speedrunning tools made this much better. Without mm -hmm. knowing her health values and what was going on in this fight would have made this tremendously tremendously more difficult to actually do uh, because we, we learned that when Lady Dimitrescu gets to that halfway point that you saw Kat throw the pipes at her, uh, her health resets um, back to 7,500. Uh, and so throwing the pipes there at that time brings her down to like uh, 3,000 or something, uh, or 2,000 and Kat shoots her once to put her at one shot from dead when she goes in the air and finishes it like that. Um, and then it also yeah. helped us start about this phase. Yeah, so this phase we're just going to be waiting until she lands, and then as soon as she says uh, every last morsel is when we start shooting. And that's Lady D. Good job. Nice. Yeah. A lot of the boss fights here, like once you get the consistency down, they're really not that hard. Um, Moreau is probably the most finicky out of all of them, I'd say. Maybe sometimes Miranda, but for the most part, a lot of the bosses are pretty consistent. It's the in-between stuff that gets a little finicky. Yes, yeah, definitely. But this is good. This is a good castle altogether. Besides the, the, stutters, the stutters, yes. Yeah. I mean, other than the stutters, yeah. I don't think he really did anything like bad at all. So that was actually pretty good. Yeah, the run's definitely clean so far. So far. Capcom lost you time. You did not lose. Time. <laughs> Damn it. It's all good. I'm, it's all, I'm only a minute behind my people. <laughs> Another pause buffer for the key. And then, do you do this one? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, so there's a load. You can actually see it in the uh, pause menu. And yeah. if you try to interact with that door, it just makes you wait before it brings up your inventory. It's it's I don't understand why for that, but it, right. it's the only door that really you have to do that. Besides, every other door is pretty quick. I it's just I guess it's because it's loading the outside area, which is my guess, anyways. But now we're out of the castle, so now we shouldn't have any FPS issues, right? Right? Right. I hope. I hope so. <laughs> right. Copium. I, I hope. <laughs> Okay, uh, so now we're going to be heading off to Benviento. Miss Donna Benviento. But first we have to go do a few things. A.K. we got to go get a jack handle real quick. And uh, talk to Duke for a little bit. We love Duke. We Duke's love good. the Duke. The Duke's the boy. He is there perhaps the are. most powerful yeah, of like any it. character in Resident Evil. Yeah, he can appear that's anywhere. what it's alluring to all the time. Yeah, right? He's the true mastermind. Hoping the DLC <laughs> goes into lore with the Duke so you get to see more about him, but uh, oh. there is there is lore that talks about how the Duke is like... None of the lords mess with him. No one messes with him. He does his own thing. Jeez, that shot is so <laughs> annoying. Yeah, so there's a lock that I I was aiming at over there to open a door early. Uh, sometimes that lock, you'll shoot it in one shot, or uh, you shoot it in like five. <laughs> sometimes yep. it's nice, sometimes the hitbox just doesn't play nice, because this gun, unfortunately, if you hip fire, it's everywhere. But even if you're shooting from a distance and you're aiming, it can still be a little shaky. It almost feels like there's a max distance that the bullet will travel, which doesn't really make logical sense, but game universe i guess <laughs> yeah I'm, I'm i i can really relate to the struggles of that lock i've had my history with it and i'm not a fan <laughs> so big pause buffer here for the jack handle and then this guy no problem excuse me door <laughs> door slight problem but 
Door is always a slight problem sometimes. <laughs> all right. Uh, so I, I intentionally put in all my ammo into the gun there so I can sell the shotgun because at this point we don't use the shotgun anymore. Uh, and we try to make sure we have all the ammo into the shotgun so we don't have any menu problems later on because the shotgun shells will take the inventory space, unfortunately. Uh, uh, we didn't really mention the shotgun and why we keep it at one bullet. Uh, so it's just faster. Uh, I'm assuming some people are probably wondering, like, why aren't you reloading it fully? Because reloading it fully is actually really slow. Like terribly painfully slow. So we only keep it at one bullet just for that. Yeah, it's faster to load a shell into the gun one at a time than it is to load <laughs> all of the shells and be fully reloaded. Yeah, that makes sense, right? Better see the duplicates. Totally. <laughs> yeah, totally. Yeah, and it's it's not even like a dismissible amount of time. It's about a half second to like 0. 0.3 to load it individually. But if you load it fully, it's like one second between each shot. It's 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 brutal. How yeah. was it? Map skip, well done. Map skip, let's nice, go. Nice, perfect. <laughs> yeah, so this game, another little silly thing uh, about this game. So that map that pops up there, if you don't look at the map in a previous playthrough or something like that, it will ha it will make you, or essentially force you to watch the map load. Uh, but if you've seen it before, before, like if you didn't close the game and you've seen it before, it will just quickly close it. I, I don't know, it's weird. So now most runners have a save file specifically just for that map. <laughs> yeah, you make a save file right before you talk to the Duke for that map interaction. And then you before you start doing runs for the day, you load the save, you run to the Duke, and then you're ready to go for the rest of the day. Yeah, yeah. It's, a, it's pretty interesting. Shout out to my, uh, or rest in peace to my old keyboard before we discovered that. Uh, we thought you had to mash really hard and really fast oh, no. to get through it. And so anytime I get there, I just beat up my keyboard. <laughs> it didn't live very long. And then Spicy, shout out to Spicy, one of the all, also routers and goats of the game, uh, discovered is like, hey guys, just load a file. Just, just load a save file. Yeah. Oh, oh, it's that easy. Oh, okay. <laughs> Thanks. Thanks, game. Very cool. Very, very this cool. Real. Yeah, so. That's a. It, this game has kind of weird little things about it uh, all over the place. Thankfully, we don't need a save file for every little thing, though. <laughs> <laughs> all right, now to go see Angie. Hopefully, she gives us good RNG. Good RNG. Good RNG. We love Angie. At least I do. I think she's cute. This is, I uh, personally, I, I think a lot of people feel this way. This is one of the coolest sections of the game, just because oh, yeah. it's it's very psychological. It's in your head. It's kind of reminiscent of uh, the Lucas section in RE7. Um, but here's some of that pause buffering to skip elevator load time, and it is a significant amount of time. It's like 10 seconds if you don't pause buffer like this. Yeah, it. You have to basically keep an eye on your FPS while you're doing this. Otherwise, uh, you won't be able to tell if it's the right time to pause it. Basically, if your FPS drops below a certain point, then you want to pause the game quickly, just so the game loads everything. Yep. Uh, but you only usually do that for specific elevators, because some elevators are longer than others, uh, like that one and one later on with Moreau's section. Yeah. So on console or a uh, like a if you just have this game on an HDD like a slow hard drive, uh, th those loads take a long time. And uh, now we're gonna start running in the yeah, house. Us usually we're not allowed to run here. Uh, you'll see the true speed we're supposed to be at. But if you duck your head outside very quickly, you can get the speed of which you would be outside inside the house. Uh, but yeah, normally you're very, very slow in this section. It's basically like RE7 all over again. <laughs> Ethan remembers his old walk speed. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Before he got military training. Right? Chris helped him out big time. Yeah. You gotta work on your got cabs, that molasses Ethan. off his shoes. <laughs> <laughs> I think it is mild time down a bit. Yeah. So we're going to be introduced to Angie here first in a second. She's going to have one of the uh, pieces of rose that we want. 
but she's gonna take everything. And I mean everything. Your money, your guns, your your health items, anything. Anything and everything is all gone. Uh, and then we enter the escape room phase. So this is all this section is really. It's just a giant escape room. I'm a fan of them, so I'm pretty okay with it. But it's a lot of sequence of puzzles and figuring things out. Yeah, it's a yeah. lot of fun. It, it's a, it's really nice and it sets the tone for like what the atmosphere is meant to be like uh, story-wise for the game. Because when you walk through this whole area, you see a lot of stuff referencing like Mia and like what what what's happening and like how they got to like this point and it really like sheds some light on like the mental state of the characters and it's like it's pretty heavy stuff if you really pay attention to everything um, yeah. but this is speedrun we're not doing that at all yeah. <laughs> right <laughs> yeah casually this this section i like sort of opens up a lot of questions nice. that you know you wouldn't have had up till now uh in the speed run we're just kind of mashing through these puzzles though yeah, the, and all the puzzles are preset. Like there no, there's no RNG to the puzzles. It's right. the same set uh, every single time. So bless that because muscle memory uh, tech tends to just take over here. However, uh, yeah, you can. If if it, oh my god, if it were RNG though, I'm just thinking about that oh, and how no. much I would hate this section. <laughs> Yeah, it, so it would it, be very painful. Sort of like the block puzzle in RE2R, we get kind of like two similar puzzles like that where we're sort of just sorting out the order. And fortunately, you can kind of just remember it by going like one, two, two, four, three, five. So you 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 sort of just figure it out, and then once you get used to it, it's one of those things where you'll do it without even realizing it, and you're like, oh wow, I didn't think I even remembered that. <laughs> oh yeah, it can be uh, very very quick once you get used to it. Yeah. Uh, not too bad. All right. The uh, only problem, and I say problem lightly, but I actually mean it heavily, is that these <laughs> this RE7 has this, but it's not nearly as bad. If you misconfirm something, like if you put oh, something no. in the wrong spot, <laughs> if you try to yeah. like do the puzzle wrong, um, in RE7, it takes a couple seconds, and then you do it again. In this game, they really wanted you to think about what you had done when you put the wrong item in the wrong spot and it will lock you out of doing anything for like 10 seconds. Yeah, oh, yeah. it will, it will make sucks. you f it will make you feel bad watching your time tick down. Oh man, it's it happens to everybody. It's the worst when it happens because there's nothing you can do. Uh it's just sit there, think about it for a while, and then you're like, okay, can I just do the thing? Can I yeah. can I do it now? Can, how about how about how about now? It's now? a big punishment, no? okay. and you're just sitting there mashing your interact key. You're like, please, I know what I did wrong. Like, obviously, I know yeah. my eight thousandth <laughs> playthrough. Please, it's especially, especially on this doll yeah. because the uh, the hitboxes for yeah. the mouth, the eye, and the chest are so close together that it can be very very easy to click on the wrong one. Yeah. It's not. It's not fun when it happens. Mm -hmm. But no drama there. Cat. Cat did that perfectly. Come on, oh, man. Uh -oh. Um, dude, did I jinx it? Am I? Am I that bad? No, <laughs> you're fine. Please, Capcom. <sighs> I might be overestimate. <laughs> it's funny. I've had it here and the Moreau section. I think it. At worst. There you go. Oof. It's okay. We. Come on. Business as usual. My Village run would definitely things. get denied. <laughs> yeah. I don't look to uh, submit this anyways. Uh, not with uh, <laughs> not with the reds we're looking at right now, but it's fine. I That's think it might just be because I'm, <laughs> I'm. I think it's because I'm streaming into Discord as well, probably. Oh. Yeah, it could definitely That's, be. Early yeah, I actually too. opted out of that because because of FPS. Yeah. Uh, I could just lower the quality, if anything, and drop it down to a better quality so my PC doesn't try to eat at it, but I don't know. <laughs> don't know. I, just, I, this is the most I've ever seen it happen. Yeah, it I think me and Zeke are like, we could commentate this on sound alone. <laughs> <laughs> true. That is true. <laughs> I, I would... It looks like this would uh, happen during Baby Skip. Oh yeah. my god, if it yeah, happens during Baby no. Skip. I did just speak it into uh, existence, so if it does right. happen, you know All you, point. dude. Yeah. So uh, this is the baby, perhaps one of the most rememberable, recognizable 
uh, enemies in the game. Uh, pretty terrifying, first couple times you encounter it. Uh, because of a skip that we're going to be doing later, we will be getting rather up close and personal. Uh, and there's uh, about five ways to do right? this skip, too. It's kind of absurd. There's like so many different ways. There's like a safe way, an advanced way, an intermediate way. There's there's so many different ways to do this Let's skip we're about to do coming up. Um, I do it a bit of a safe way. I'm not uh, Zeke over here who just runs into the face of the baby. I'm not. I I'm not that risky yet. <laughs> yeah. So the the baby does have an insta kill if you come into contact with it, um, which is kind of annoying. The checkpoints are pretty forgiving in this section. So even if even if the worst case scenario happens, it's not too big of a uh, restart. But yeah. So the lights go out and the baby is going to be blocking our path. And, and we, we got to get behind the baby. Yeah. But how are we going to do that? I wonder. Hmm. I'm just going to wait here. I'll let sure? the baby come come at me. Hey, everybody want a baby? It's is a nice baby. Wrong? Look at that baby. It's exactly what babies look like, by the way. It's a bold strategy. Let's see how it pays off. Nice. And there we go. <laughs> <laughs> Bye, baby. Easy. Yeah. Easy peasy. The, the baby skip, like Kat said, has gone through like so many different changes. Um, and its its discovery was very interesting. Basically, the logic behind that to give you a really short TLDR of it is um, the baby has an animation it will enter when it needs to enter a door to just, like get to Ethan. Um, but if you already have a door open and you like bait a lunge attack, it kind of has to reset itself to get into spot for it, which gives Ethan enough time just to run right through past it. Yeah. Uh, when this game was first being routed, I remember everybody was debating which, uh, de debating, debate, debating, uh, which is the <laughs> is the is the fastest way to do it, and uh, ultimately, like I would say, between the slowest possible way and the fastest possible way, there's maybe only a couple seconds at most, you know. So it's sort of one of those things where it's like whichever way results in you not dying like most consistently, that's the way you should go with. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> yeah. Uh, because the fastest way to do it doesn't really save you a ton of time. It does save you time, but nothing uh, too crazy. I'm gonna actually going to dumb down the. Uh, how do I? 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 How do I turn it down? Uh, change quality thirty. There you go. Hopefully nice. that that helps. Yeah. Whatever you got to do. Capcom, please. I don't know when that change that introduced these issues came into existence, because I didn't see any patch notes recently, but the game definitely performs different now than it did, like, three or four months ago. Yeah. Yeah. My, and my computer is by no means... It's definitely not a toaster. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I'd reckon it's probably some mixture of a game, of the game update, or uh, game-ready drivers with the video and stuff that probably comes. I did just update my drivers. Hmm. Maybe it's NVIDIA this entire time. Oh, I too am on <laughs> but modern it seems drivers. The, the game seems to be running a lot smoother for me now, so. That's good. good. So this is How's Angie. The RNG? Bad RNG. Yeah. Oh. Angie no. has uh, the very first spawn upstairs that Kat went to is a set spawn. She always starts the fights there. The next two spawns are flipped between being close and far. This one was far. And this next one is also far. Uh, it's unlucky. That means, in a run sense, this would be an eight second time loss because he went to the two furthest positions rather than the two closest ones. Yeah, we're just getting a very bad marathon luck today. <laughs> that is how it is, isn't it? <laughs> uh, it's okay. It's about having fun, not about pulling PBs and world records. That's for later. <laughs> All Somebody right. needs to mod Kermit over Angie. <laughs> Modders, make it happen. Yeah. So that's who was behind all that. Now we got the leg. Next two. All right, don't forget Angie. Yeah. Uh, so Angie is probably the one of the only few boss uh, pieces that we'll pick up that we have to actually go out of our way to pick it up because some bosses, the uh, their like item or their crystal or whatever. Uh, will be available as soon as we get out of the cutscene. Um, 
like Lady D, for instance. However, for uh, Angie, we have to actually turn around and pick her up. If we forget her, then that messes with a lot of the inventory and items we need for later. Especially since uh, we are going to have to do a little bit of a Duke stop coming up. Now hang out with Duke for a bit. Our boy. The boy. Da, 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 da. When we uh, yeah. when this when this was first being routed, um, I guess we talk a lot about the routing because you're basically looking at the three people who routed the game. <laughs> so when, yeah. <laughs> when it comes to routing this, uh, the first thing everyone thought about when we played the game casually going into screen is like, all right, how are we gonna not see the Duke as much as possible? Because we going to see the Duke is a time loss every time you do it. So I went through a oh, yeah. lot of revisions. And it took us time to realize certain things like um, pipes, pipe bombs, and mines are the best items in the game. Uh, and the sniper rifle, when fully upgraded, is is like the best weapon, but financially speaking, that you can get in the game. And there was a lot of debate. Uh, there was a ton of debate actually around uh, sniper versus grenade launcher. A lot yep. of people were like, oh, I want to do this, the grenade launcher route. And other people were like, no, I'm going to stick to the sniper route. So there's a lot of debate on which one was faster. Turns out using a bit of both is faster. Remember the Magnum? We used to, there was a point where. Oh, yeah, I remember we were, the Magnum. <laughs> we used to go way out of the way just to pick up the Magnum. And uh, I, I don't think that lasted very long. We were like, wait, this is, this is heckin' slow. And yeah, then. Uh, owns, though. Yeah, it does so much damage. It's really fun. We but, do pick it up on hardcore, I believe, but we don't pick it up on casual. Uh, yeah. It's just there's no point when you have everything else at your disposal, like the sniper and the grenade launcher. All right. Has for you. Uh, did I forget to ah, no? Miss Angie. Yeah. Just so first shopping trip, popular, you know. we'll take his you whole know. stock of pipe bombs and mines, and we're going to upgrade the sniper yes, rifle a bit. Uh, we don't really have to go crazy with upgrading the sniper rifle because we're only going to use a, a very small amount in this next section, but it, it's sort of like preemptively doing it for later. Yeah. Uh, we're going to be using it for uh, the sniper for Moreau and a boss a little bit later. We've already met that boss, uh, but we'll see him very, very soon. Oh, okay. Never mind. Okay. Bullets phasing through the fence. That's that always the good. strongest fence I've ever seen in my life. <laughs> Very cool. Thanks, fence. Well, and we broke that fence in the intro, too, so I don't know who rebuilt it. Uh, the lichens. They're very hard at work. <laughs> it's got to be the yellow tape Resident Evil guy, right? Oh, yeah, the guy that's leaving <laughs> yellow, yello tape yellow tape. Dude. The paintings. Yeah, I, I saw him last Halloween. We, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we love yellow tape, dude. <laughs> um, oh, hi. With the... Uh, in terms of like the routing and like grenade launcher and stuff, um, Kat actually just walked by the grenade launcher, but we're actually not going to pick it up until later. Um, the route did change a lot between sniper and grenade launcher because we, it, it's not really for anything before or at this current point. The questions really came into play when factory got it, when we had to start worrying about what to do there. Um, Cause that's when actually the weapons start to shine is in factory. Factory is like, oh yeah, was the hardest thing to get routed to no longer be awful. Because factory is awful. It is so hard <laughs> to just do. Um, even like casually, it was hard to play through. Uh, but in the speed run, we struggled with it bad because the enemy density is very high and things don't die fast. And there's there's also doors. there's just doors that uh, have a lot of lights that we need to shoot off. So now we use the grenade launcher for that. You'll see that very soon uh, when we get to the factory. Um, but yeah, the factory just has a lot of things to think about and a lot of things you need to pick up, look out for, and also make sure the enemies obviously don't hit us all along the way. But sometimes you just have no choice because the game decides you get hit here. <laughs> it's the RE7 ship of RE Village, basically. Yeah. There's a lot of backtracking and annoying stuff. But yeah. now we're trying to find a way out of here, and fortunately, there's a there's a boat parked outside. Let's go! Let's go! I love boat. I'm on a boat. <laughs> All right, so we can just grab that without the enemies really paying us any attention. 
Thankfully, a lot of the things in this game you can just grab without having any issues. Sometimes they get a little buggy there, but not not really. Yeah. I honestly, with the boat, I thought they were gonna do an RE4, but El Delago or what, however you pronounce the yeah. name. Yeah, the logo. Yeah, I thought I, the I, same thing. I wonder if that wasn't planned and they scrapped it because I think they had a similar idea for RE7 and then they scrapped it because they, it was too ambitious and they were like, nah, we don't want to do it. But I, I wonder... I feel like that was like the idea with this section, but then yeah. they're like, nah, something probably came up where it was a little buggy. Yeah. Yeah. Part of me imagines there's one dude who's like stoked about the idea who brings it up every time they're at a meeting for a new RE game. Delago. The guys Can we get, a, can we get yeah. a boat boss fight? Please, guys. What was that? They, somebody on that team loves boats. Don't oh, know who, but somebody on that team. It's like, oh, there them. they go again, talking about the boat idea. <laughs> every RE game, we got to shoot yeah. them down on this boat idea. All right. Some Moro's angry. <laughs> Moro's angry, so we're gonna we're gonna run away now. Uh, we shot the yellow tape over there. Uh, that yellow tape guy, so carefully placed, <laughs> uh, to get the bridge down essentially, because there is a bridge we have to knock down, and we what could either do it there do. or there's another section to do it. But this is just the easier access to it because we can see it immediately <sighs> versus uh, hope we hit one of them. They're not too hard to hit, but it, uh, yeah. you, you are kind of on a timer because Moreau will destroy the little dock that you're standing on. So it's like, you know, a little, little bit of pressure. Not too bad. Just an instant death if you go slow. <laughs> Nothing too serious. It's fine. Yeah. It's no biggie. The, no worries. Ethan, Ethan also has no fall damage. It's the it's the thread that ties Ghostwire to Village. Look yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. I keep forgetting how much that game has, like, no fall damage. Yeah, yeah. So... This is, uh, this is a pretty fun section, casually, I would say, but it's it's mostly just running and uh, avoiding also a couple spots. Moreau is the best. He is the best. He is the best. Moreau is the best RE character ever. This uh, this whole section um, kind of has some layers to it in a speedrun sense. Um, when you're when you're really pushing for like record times, um, there's something you need to be aware of of this area is that there's a global timer that you're on to beat the windmill at the end of the section. Uh, mm -hmm. Where basically you have to be as fast as you possibly can be without ever stopping, and you will hit a a little puzzle here um, that Cat will come to later on a windmill. Uh, it's because you're actually fighting the cycle of it ever uh, from the moment you step into the arena. Basically, it's it's. It's ridiculous, and it's actually a pretty sizable time loss if you don't get it, um, obviously, on world record strats. Yeah. So the windmill can either take forever to come at you or, like, you know, land, or it takes, like, no time at all to land. Uh, but doing this section pretty quickly... Oh, you are the best, Moreau. You are very much the best. I'm watching. Yes, I'm watching, honey. You got this. You, you're <laughs> doing so great. Swim right through the dock, actually. It's like based <laughs> right through it. All right, my sniper. We love Muro. Fun Muro fact: Muro shares the voice actor with Lucas from Mario Seven. Same guy. That blows my mind every single time. Yeah, it's the same I guy. Didn't actually know that. That's wild. Yeah, that, talk about range, right? Like it's crazy. Yeah. That's insane. Uh, da, da, da. Not the only one that's shared with RE7. Uh, Paula Road also is Evelyn in RE7. Mm -hmm. Yes. Who plays Andy she, now she's there. got some range. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I don't. I, 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 I could never do a high pitched voice for that long, but bless her. Those Eevee laughs, dude. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so creepy. All right. Well, that shot decided to be nice for now. <laughs> Let's see, what, in the, is the windmill going to participate or be nice today? Yeah. Yeah. So what is we got to do is there's this windmill. We have to come over here and inspect it. And then we can move uh, this platform out of the way, which will line the ladder up with uh, that and also stop the windmill, I guess, somehow, maybe? Question mark. Yeah, um, uh, <laughs> some weird, it's a some strange weird mechanism. mechanism. Yeah. And there we go. Ooh, perfect, dude. 
Perfect timing. It's like Amazing. it knew I was coming. <laughs> Yeah, so if sometimes you have to wait like five seconds for that windmill. This is a little bit more, maybe, um, depending oh, on what the cycle is. Sometimes it takes is. forever. Yeah. It's pretty Ooh, bad. Hi, Moreau. It's the saddest thing, because you'll see the ladder go by right as you finish, and you're like, oh, yeah. and you kind of sit there and think about it for a bit. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> All right. So now we are done with the first half of Moreau's section, and now we're going to be moving on to fighting Moreau. But first... Ethan, I just gotta let you know that you really need to pick up your weight, okay? Okay. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, he listened. Wow. He, he listens. He's he's such a good listener. He never listens to me. Yeah, me neither, man. <laughs> <laughs> Think about Ethan in this game and why I actually love what they did with this character. His he has the like some crazy banging one-liners in this game, and they're so funny. I don't, yeah. don't know what they were thinking, like, they, but it, it's perfect for him. His character like came out amazing in this game. They went with like '80s horror cheese, which is honestly it's a it's an amazing fit. I hope they keep it up. But he he really he's like, oh, now you, I don't want to be fish food. Like it's <laughs> got a lot of stuff on your plate, man. I don't know if now's the time to be coming up with witty one-liners. <laughs> yeah. All right, time for Moreau. You got Here this. You go. Cat's basically going to throw a pipe to start this fight, which staggers Moreau and throws two more behind him to hit an explosive behind him and put him at as close to 11,500 health as possible, put three mines down and force him to walk on it, and he's dead. Nice. When Perfect. can you miss it? Yeah. And, death is um, and it's worth mentioning, I think this is the first point in the run that our DA is now above 1,000. Yep. Yeah. Uh, after killing Moreau, like, so all that setup that we did in Lycan Raid kind of uh, comes to work here because if, if you're above a thousand that fight is a little bit like you can still get it but you might have to do a couple sniper shots with uh fast reflex time but cat did it perfectly yeah nice job yeah yeah the one thing i was very worried about is the thing that went right and everything else went wrong. <laughs> <laughs> uh, sometimes it just do be like that it really do it works out uh, with the DA thing because actually going into the next section, um, in order to optimally do the fight, we actually need to be above DA1 uh, to kill the next boss that's coming up because of phasing and staggering. But we'll explain how he works when we get to him. But it's, it's just funny that it works out that way. Yeah, it's, yeah it's, right. it's fortunate that it takes so long for your DA to go back above 1,000 because we are killing stuff, you know, like between Lady D and the daughters and all that stuff, so... Yeah, and even just shooting things will bring up your DA as well. So if you like shoot, like, I don't know, if you shoot a pig, uh, like these pigs here, if you were to shoot one, your DA will go up. Yeah, because you are a skilled player. I'm so good. Look, game, <laughs> look at me kill the pig. Shot a harmless pig. Good for you. <laughs> we do not harm the animals in this in this here you bring a uh, DA video down game. You shoot a pig. <laughs> yeah, right? Yeah, right. Like, a good player wouldn't shoot the pig. <laughs> How dare you? Also, Billy. We love Billy. Yeah. So All now right. we get the grenade launcher. We're gonna shoot this, uh... Oh, come on! Oh, that, no, that <laughs> god door. Yeah. God door. It gets me every time. Sometimes you can squeeze through that door before it closes. Unfortunately, sometimes, it, most times, it's just like, no, we're gonna close. Hi, really Billy. Really hard. <laughs> that is a very hard door to get through. I recently labbed it, and it is not easy <laughs> to do no. at all. Uh, it's just, like, if I were to grab just the grenade launcher, it would have been fine. But yeah, because I need to grab the ammo and the grenade launcher, that door is like most likely 90% going to close on me. So I just wait it out. Yeah. Let's give it a little bit of a wait time. All right. So now we are making our way to our next boss fight, uh, which is going to be coming up in about a minute or so. But first, we got to get through all these lichens. They're not too happy. They're starting to yell at us. They're going to tell the church. Whoa. Whoa. That was weird. He's never usually there. There's a like a lot of good pickups here. So this is a section where if you're low on sniper ammo for some reason, or um, even pistol ammo, actually, uh, you can just break some of the boxes, and, and the pickups are usually pretty good. Sometimes there's some grenade rounds, which aren't necessary, but are helpful. Um, but yeah. yeah. Usually we only p focus on picking up the landmine and the sniper ammo. Sometimes yes. I pick up 
handgun ammo specifically for factory because you do need a little bit of ammo for factory uh, and I don't really like to be a, a, a risky with that. I think we're pretty good on ammo though so I don't need to really pick up any. Uh, it's usually if I'm like around only 10 bullets. Yeah. And I'm like, I should probably pick some of that up, huh? Running out of pistol ammo in factory is actually a run killer. It's really, really bad. Um, it's pretty rare, but I, I have had runs die in factory because I managed to run out of ammo. And then I have to break the uh, lights, and I'm like, I have to knife these. <laughs> yeah, it's very unfortunate when it happens. <laughs> uh, thankfully for... Because before we used to use the M11, was it? Uh... Yeah. Brain powers. I'm trying to oh remember. God, that was a year ago. Holy. I think it started we used to off use... with the uh, the TAC. We used to use shoot the TAC shotgun uh, hip fire spread to hit as many lights as we could before switching to the uh, to the Lenny the to shoot the rest of the lights. And then after that, we started using pipe bombs for it. <laughs> Even though pipe bombs are, you know, kind of valuable. Yeah, it was not yeah. a lot back then. <laughs> I think uh, I think that was that was my strat with the pipe pumps. Yeah. <laughs> I just think you're I crazy, like, and then I sound like, wait, no, this is huge. <laughs> they can save so much time. Yeah. And then we were like, wait, we need those pipe bombs. <laughs> Never mind. <laughs> uh, but uh, yeah, okay, there's a few different strat changes over time that we've had, uh, trying to you know lab with different weapons, different you know ammo types, stuff like that. Yeah, the route has seen a lot of change, uh, and a strat's yeah. changed, so it does the route around it. Um, and it's even happened as recent as like the last month, where we've adjusted certain routing to make uh, like Miranda faster, for example. New Miranda um, is insane. Yeah, it's. Uh, I won't be doing the new Miranda strat because I literally just discovered it last week. So yeah, uh, I'm not going to be messing around with that. I'm yeah, I, be doing I can't the do old it either. Strat. It's scary. <laughs> For marathons, I don't trust myself. <laughs> yeah, right. It's it's it. It can go really south, but nice. You're All right. right, now it's time for Urius. It's gonna be a lot of uh, shots, and I I apologize in advance for one of the shots. <laughs> yeah, it's <laughs> uh, so, it's necessary. Yeah, it actually is. So Urius here, um, this strat is uh, all these shots are intentionally placed. So one to the head, one to his arm, two to his head. You do one more to his head, one to another area, and then two more to his head. The idea of that is we're staggering the damage to hit him. And you see as he staggered right there, we actually staggered him out of summoning lichens. And so we force him to come down now. Cat's going to do a few more shots. He's going to let him jump down, turn, and then finish him off with uh, three more sniper shots and one grenade launcher shot to kill Urius. Easy peasy. Nice. There you go. And that's Urius. Shop. One and done. Yeah, Urius is uh, over Urius, please. <laughs> <laughs> the hardest part of Urius, I'd say, is uh, definitely the uh, the final three shots on the top when he's about to land because it's such a tightly timed window to get those three shots in. You don't have to do three shots uh, when when he's up top on the final ones, but. It's a just so you don't have to do a fourth shot when he's down on the ground. So you might as well just squeeze those three shots in. But again, the window's really tight. So if you miss one of the shots or if you're not quick enough, he can jump right on your head. Yeah. Which obviously we do not want. So <laughs> you gotta be fast. Your ace is not light. That is for sure. Mm -mm. He bonks. No, no. Yeah, he, uh, and especially uh, if he were to spawn in a bunch of lichens that would have been pretty dangerous as well yeah when he when he spawns in the lichens i get so bummed out i'm like i know i did something wrong but it's like it's kind of a hectic fight and the shots have to be really on point so yeah, yeah. oh billy's being a good boy today thank you billy truly goaded <laughs> we love we love billy the goat <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. That's so bad. Because <laughs> he's a goat. Come on, you know. It's oh, I got outrageous. it. That was the problem, is that I understood the joke. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, now we get to use our roses flasks. Yeah, um, we're going to be putting it into the chalice here. Uh, basically, 
Uh, we're going to show off Ethan's ability to carry large things uh, without his hands. Because yeah. we're going to just take this. Thing's huge. Don't know where it goes, but it goes in his pockets. Must be busy. I am busy, Duke. I'm busy. There's a there's an audience, Duke. Say hello. <laughs> It's funny how Duke has all this idle dialogue. If you sort of like run past him, he says, oh, must not have seen me. Or <laughs> must be busy. He's laid eyes on me then. Uh, yeah. Uh, he's just kind of bummed out that he doesn't get to talk to Ethan. The best one, hands down, is definitely the RE4 merchant reference. Oh my God, I love that. I, I found that oh, yeah. uh, for my first time when I was doing the demo uh, and I was just messing around in the Duke. And I went as soon as he said it, my heart was just like, ah, oh, yay! I was so excited. <laughs> yeah. He says, like, what are you buying? A friend of mine used to say something like that. <laughs> so good. It's a great reference. Yeah. I'm really, really happy they uh, added a merchant again. I don't know what it is about merchants, but I, I love the merchants in these games, especially like the RE4 merchant is just so iconic. And then, you know, now we have a 2021 version of the merchant. Yeah. He's big and lovable. It's nice on a casual playthrough, and I think I like it especially with RE games, because like most of the time you're alone and the game is helpless, and then you have like a pseudo neutral friend, quote unquote, who, who, who won't kill you when you see him. And it's kind of nice. <laughs> yeah. And he at least uh, gives us some fun dialogue along the way. Whereas in the RE4 merchant, it was just like, hey, hey, hey. thank you. <laughs> thank you. What are you <laughs> buying? <laughs> what are you buying? What are you selling? <laughs> Not enough cash. Not enough cash, stranger. The yeah. dude also has great dialogue if you shoot near him. Oh, yeah. It's <laughs> he, like, claps. Really He's like, nice shot. Excellent yeah, he'll, like, shot. He'll clap and be like, that's a lovely weapon. All right, time to meet Magneto. I mean, Heisenberg. <laughs> My favorite lord. Unfortunately, we're going to skip him. I usually let this cutscene, that cutscene play it's out because it's one of scene. my favorites. Oh, yeah. It's, it's, it is my favorite, hands down. I, I, it's like the really missed opportunity they didn't actually let you choose to work with right? Heisenberg or not. But. Oh, my God. I wish. I hope, in the, I hope in the DLC they actually allow the ability to work with Heisenberg because I really want to see how that plays that out. That alternate ending, that'd be so interesting. Yeah. Yeah, because because Heisenberg is he basically says to Ethan, he's like, hey, listen, if you work thing? with me, we, we can take down Miranda and like, you know, I don't really care what happens after. And Ethan, you know, he's he's brazen. He's bold. He's not putting up with anybody's nonsense. So he he, he obviously denies it. But uh, yeah. I think everybody had the same thought. They were like, oh, is it going to give me the choice? Is it going to let me work with Heisenberg? That'd be so cool. Uh, even see? if it was a pseudo choice, I would take it. Yeah, kind of like kind of like RE7 pseudo choice of like Mia and Zoe, where right. it's like Although, it's a choice but not really. Yeah. It's, yeah, I was gonna say it's not really much of a choice in RE7 because even if you did pick Zoe, it's literally the same. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Same how it, everything plays out the same. The only difference is you fight Mia again, and, and then Mia's not on the plane on the this end. Sorry, up. spoiler alert. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but yeah, so I, I was really kind of like bummed out when there was no choice, but I hope that maybe in the DLC they'll add it. Be so cool. Alright, so now it's time for factory. It's a lot of uh, red dots. Yeah. Red dots. And red dots boys and, behind uh, doors. Yeah. They love to put their boys behind the doors. Uh, so we are going to have to do a little bit of uh, duck, dodge, and weave. All that stuff. Yeah, the factory uh, was used to be the worst part of the game until we started using grenade launcher, which actually made it easier because the grenade launcher kind of owns everything here. The the problem with the factory is it introduces uh, a couple things that really ended up making us hate it. Uh, one being the one of the worst enemy types in the game called a soldat, and two, this guy. yeah, those fellas. And two is Mortal Kombat esque finishers from grabs that will happen. Oh yeah, <laughs> if you get they're touched, like fifteen so second grabs. It's pretty bad. Yeah, it's a cool every... animation, but man, they look do you like not death animations because they they yeah like they you know, they drill through Ethan's body, but he walks away after taking two hundred damage. It's like uh, okay. Yeah. I think it's because we got too used to RE seven, where if Jack basically like grabs you in a certain fashion, it's game over. <laughs> 
That's true. Yeah. So maybe maybe we just got too used to that game. It's, it's funny. The the animation is so brutal, but the only real threat, it's not really health. It's just the time loss. <laughs> so you're not like bummed out that you're taking damage. You're just like, oh man, that's like 10 seconds right down the drain. Like, please. Yeah, it's, yeah. it's, it's pretty bad. And now for the worst spot is <laughs> oh, no. Central. Oh, my. Good cycles. Let's go. Oh. Oh, nice. Good. I don't trust. Oh. Yeah, that guy, that guy Yeah, me a no. Bit. <laughs> yeah, the block. So yeah, these uh these gears can like really kind of just smash Ethan's head in a bit. <laughs> yeah, the and, hitbox for them is kind of uh yeah. large. Um, Questionable so, at best, yeah. Yeah. It's very um, easy to get hit in the head or uh if you get body blocked by a creature by any like at any point, it will throw off the timing. So it's just easier to wait a second or just shoot one of the monsters in the head so it doesn't grab you and then you just carry on. Yeah. Easy. And sometimes you get bonked, like combo bonked, where you're just kind of stuck under the thing. And oh yeah. Like It's like a slapstick cartoon thing where Ethan's <laughs> just repeatedly <laughs> getting hit on the head. It's funny because you'll hear the enemies get bonked too. Uh, yeah, that's true. Yeah, sometimes the enemies when they get bonked and it's if they're like body blocking you, they'll get bonked first, and you'll just see their body go absolutely fly. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and it raises your DA too. Yeah, <laughs> really silly, but yeah. Uh, if an enemy will kill another enemy near you, that counts as a DA rise. Yep. All right. Please don't hit me, sir. Yeah, I hear you behind me. Factory is kind of non-stop. It's, it's one of those, it's the part of the game where it kind of like amps up seemingly out of nowhere. It gets a little extreme. And there are some downtime moments, don't get me wrong. But you're on edge a lot of the time in the middle of a run in Factory, especially if you're like on pace, because you can actually mess up almost every What? How did... What? I don't know. It, what? Small indie company, man. They didn't... <laughs> Does it even make sense? It I, only I the bottom two? I, I have no I, idea. I have no idea how that happened. Yeah, so like I was saying, there's any point you could really just, like, at any point, like, <laughs> that kind of stuff could happen. Like, that shot right there that just happened to Cat, like, happened to me as well today. Yeah. It, it's, it's, it's insane, like, because you have to, like, be so precise with everything. It, on surface level, as a viewer, or if you don't run the game, it looks easy. But it isn't, because you can't make a mistake. Like, you're just not allowed to make a mistake. Hitboxes for those grenade launchers can and will just get in the way. Um, it's really unlucky when it happens, as you saw. Uh, it doesn't happen all the time, but yeah, it's just not fun when it does. So this one's pretty easy, but you can get that one from a little bit further. But because of how the other two went, I'm not chancing it. <laughs> yeah, totally <laughs> fair. You usually lob it at the back wall, and I have such mixed results with that one. Yeah, every single time I try to shoot that one from a distance, it just doesn't hit any of them. And I'm yeah. like, all right, well. And, and then it's really bad because you have to reload the grenade launcher, or sometimes you don't have a grenade launcher around, and then the dude's on your tail. Yeah, and, and grenade launcher shots here are pretty important, so you don't want to yeah. be like wasting too many. So if you miss a shot, that's just sucks to suck you gotta go in with the pistol at that point because yep. you do need the grenade launcher shots mm -hmm. later uh so yeah you don't want to don't want to waste precious resources <laughs> it is, it is uh, a lot of time loss to tell you mm -hmm. experience i don't give a All shit right. about your family drama oh ethan hostile all right, so this is the fan room. It's our biggest fan. We got to destroy it. As you do to your biggest fan. Yes. So those shots are, you can either get the hitbox really weirdly, or sometimes you don't get it. <laughs> I, I don't know. Sometimes it's like I'm not even aiming at them, and somehow I get the shots off. Another one. Mm -hmm. And these, uh, these two fellows here are the Time Lost Twins. Yeah, they, they are not pleasant. Thankfully, the way we go about this room, we don't ever really have to deal with them until the very last kind of second. 
uh, where they're gonna pop up here, unless they decide not to show up, which can happen sometimes. Oh. Oh, oh, the elevator oh. damn! Oh my! What the heck? Oh my goodness! All right, I've heard we're fine. Yeah, so I I, uh, I was gonna say uh, on that ladder <laughs> as you you're can going still up, take damage. yeah, you can basically die as we just saw. Um, so that they almost have, killed me. Yeah, that was like really you went really from, like, crazy. Full to three hundred like instantly. Yeah, yeah, um, I was actually like one more shot from death. It was really really bad. <laughs> wow. <laughs> yeah, I'm close. We're, we're seeing everything. Cat's doing a great job at showing us just all the possibilities for how Literally this Literally how bad this run can get. <laughs> this is no, how bad it can get. You're doing a great job, dude. This is, it's not an easy run. It's definitely not an easy run. Yeah, you're great. Forgiving. And also you're fighting Capcom alongside of it, so it's like... Yeah, it's less yeah. the game and more just the, the technical stuff sometimes. It's okay. But yeah. You haven't done uh, Oh, yeah, no, no there's no deaths. So you know what we take those. Oh, I guess and yet. Long... I should say. Yet, <laughs> yes, yes, yes. keep it open-ended, just in case. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but yeah, I, I do hope everybody is enjoying the run uh, thus far. I do apologize for the uh, technical issues, unfortunately, that's out of my control. But I do apologize for that. But thank you very much, uh, everyone, very much. Sorry, words are hard. Uh, for watching and stuff. Run's still going. Don't worry. We're, still <laughs> We're not in yet. We still I'm got. Enjoying. We still got a lot of arcs in this anime. We got Transformers. <laughs> yeah, we, yeah, we, we got to the Gundams. Yeah, and then we, we got, got Call of Chris of Duty. <laughs> yeah, we got the Chris of Duty, of course. I'll stop it. I'll use Rose to kill Miranda. Miranda. The way he says Miranda is like. Uh, the thing about it is, uh, we don't know why they did it like this, and why they, like, it, it, obviously, like, the, the voice actor for Heisenberg uh, is English? He's British. British, yeah. yeah. Like so, like, I'm not sure if it was intentionally done or if it's just a thing with his accent, but he says Miranda instead of Miranda, and almost every Miranda. single player noticed it, like, instantly, and then we're all like, did he just say Miranda? <laughs> so that's all we notice now when he says yeah. Miranda. Miranda. I love I think, Miranda. So a lot of people, uh, Kat, is your last split Miranda? Uh, I think so, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I, I think, think a lot of people. last split is yeah. Miranda. <laughs> <laughs> a lot of people set their last split name to uh, Miranda just because <laughs> it's definitely what Heisenberg says. Of course, of course. All right. So now we're going to be going through the factory one more time uh, to go make a key. So this is for Sturm. Uh, we're gonna be crafting another item at the uh, little area, the little hub area, I guess you could call it. It's dark. It's dark. Uh, <laughs> however, we're gonna have to go through a ton of enemies beforehand, which eh, they can either be nice or they can be absolutely rude. I'm hoping they decide to be nice. So this guy, we're gonna get him out of the way right now. I don't, I don't want him in here. I don't want him around me, although his Crystal heart. I hope I don't accidentally pick that up. <laughs> yeah. So, um, since this is a uh, new game run, uh, if in New Game Plus you already have a bunch of stuff in your inventory, so you don't get prompts for picking up treasures. Uh, since this is new game, we get prompts for every treasure we pick up. Oh, so yeah. that's why Cat has been only picking up uh, like the necessary boss drop treasures and just running past all the regular enemy drop treasures. Um, hopefully. Sometimes when you're trying to open a door, <laughs> there's a yeah, heart in the way. Yeah, you can see the crystal mechanical heart is just yeah. popping up on my screen. That's It's signifying the one below and this one right here. Yeah. Oh, you are taking your sweet time, huh, baby boy? All right, no worries. I'll go around and wait. All right. So now for the last buddy. This guy. So we're going to change our FPS to 30 here to yep. allow us to squeeze by and like that nice wow you got that so much better than i <laughs> i ever get that that's so good that's like the most consistent one that i usually get uh, i just hit him with a grenade and then go on to his 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 right side my left side see i just try and like cram in through the right side maybe i should i think i might have to adopt your strat <laughs> uh i only do the right side if the guy before him hits me uh -huh. So if I go, if I get hit by the guy Oh, to previous, avoid the hit, true. Yeah. Then he won't 
uh, he won't hit me afterwards. Uh, the second guy won't hit me afterwards. He'll just pr basically just let me pass through. Nice. All right, now to Sturm. So I'm going to be placing down some landmines and throwing some pipe bombs, and then he should be dead. When can you miss it? <laughs> Yeah, so Kat's been picking up, uh, she started its stronghold picking up, uh, metal scrap. And you need three metal scrap to this point in the game to make three pipe bombs to kill Sturm with. Um, those are, like, some of the only, like, treasure slash craft tools that Kat picked up alongside gunpowder. Because that's, how, that's yeah. what you need to make the, the pipes. And now Sturm's dead, got his heart to sell it later, and GG easy. Yeah, yeah, so we're going to be needing a ton of money. Not like a crazy amount, but we do need quite a bit of money uh, for later on because we're going to have to fully, almost, basically almost fully upgrade the sniper for the final boss. Uh, so that's why we're very picky on which items we pick up or which treasures we pick up because there is a little bit of a pause and it pauses the game entirely when you go to pick up an item. Uh, but it doesn't pause IGT, so... Can be a lot of uh, big time waster if you choose to pick up certain ones. Yes. Yeah. All right, time for transformers. More than meets the eye, guys. Yep. In that yeah. cutscene, we uh, we said hi to Chris. Chris is like, "Yo, I fixed up this tank. Like somehow, Chris has this ability, I'm coming, um, and it's made of a metal polymer composite, which means that." It is immune to Heisenberg's, uh, like, Magneto sort of abilities. Mm -hmm. And, uh, yeah. This was probably one of the most, like, of the game. Like, the whole part of it, like, there were some moments. It's like, hey, this is a little weird, maybe a little far-fetched. But that's oh, normal. I got, a, I got an achievement. Let's <laughs> you go. You got an achievement. Oh, Let's go. <laughs> Did you get one? Yeah. <laughs> you shoot off those guys, you get an achievement. It's kind of funny. I never got the achievement for that. Let's <laughs> go. And this is the part of the game where we got into this and we we're like, there's no way we're actually about to use this to fight a boss, are we? And the answer was yes. Yeah. Um, so there, the little F, uh, FPS change there, it prevents you from getting knocked as far back. And we're actually going to use that on Heisenberg also. Um, and then there's a retry to just get into the fight immediately instead of having to wait for him to spawn and say some lines. Which also reloads your rocket, so let's use it right away. Oh yeah, that's true. Yeah. Um, so it's a pretty straightforward fight. Unfortunately, he doesn't really get close until our rockets are ready anyway. And, uh... Nice. Yeah, so the goal is to uh, do a bunch of damage to him, hit him with the rocket to uh, shoot him across to the other side of the arena, and then we do a little bit more damage, usually two weak spots to go. There you go. And he's done. And now he will enter Slowly the center. Slowly go to where he needs to be. So it takes... If you have him in a specific spot, sometimes he'll roll, take forever to roll his butt yeah. over to it. Minus 50 DKP. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. We're going to shoot in three, two, one. Shoot. And that's Heisenberg. Heisenberg's pretty quick. Uh, we still got a little bit left of Heisenberg, but it's basically done at this point. Yeah. I think the question everybody has is how does he know about Chris's boulder punching? Yeah, what's the lore yeah. there? Did him and Wesker to... have a chat or or what? What's going on? Uh, oh yeah, because there's like a whole if you there's like a whole lore dump section where you find out that uh, Miranda was kind of behind a lot of things from back in like the original game, uh, first Resident Evil. So I think they've known about Chris for some time. Yeah, the lore of, of like Miranda is um, Miranda was behind the original inspiration of Umbrella. Umbrella was made because of um, because of her and what she found with the mold and the Mega Mycete and all that fun stuff. Spencer yeah. uh, made Umbrella based off of the, it's kind of I, I thought it was very cool how they tied in. The mold, right, like RE7's mold in the Mega Mycetean Village to the start of the entire franchise. Right. Um, I, that plot twist was so good. 
Yeah, Even though it it's just a lore circle. dump section. It's great. Yeah. I loved the full circle that it went to, you know, tie the story together from the first game to now the last game. Um, yeah. Hopefully not the last, but <laughs> <laughs> I doubt it. But you never know sometimes. The latest. The latest game. Yeah. Yes. In RE9, where we get to fight on a boat. Oh, I, if there's a boat section. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God. I, I'm going to love and hate it. <laughs> It's like the guy at the meeting finally got his wish, and he's like, "They're put, they're doing it, they're putting it in the boat." Yes, the boat. Fight. Yeah. In a while, so All right. So now it is Call of Call of Duty. I mean, Chris of Duty. Doing nothing but recon. Where we're just gonna run around, popping heads, and uh, making things go boom. Essentially, it's not that much of a hard area per se. Like tech on a technical level, it's not hard. But on uh, Lycan's deciding to be nice, eh. <laughs> it's a uh, it's up in the air. Yeah, some of these uh, Lycans we, we have to get pretty close to a few of them in a few spots, like such as right about now. Yeah, he like um, body blocked me. Yeah, and uh, they they can grab, uh, and uh, you may notice Cat's doing a little thing between shots where she's blocking. And that actually uh, saves some time because there's a big slowdown when you shoot. Don't get cocky. Uh, and that was another little pause buffer just to get to the door quicker. Yeah, because sometimes the game will slow down the character, so we just pause buffer to bring the character to full speed. It's basically lose lose real time to gain uh, in-game time, essentially, or to save in-game time. Yes. But yeah, so we, we gotta do that a few more times. I'm hoping these guys play nice. Question mark? Yeah, these guys can uh, sometimes troll or be out of position. Nice. Quick draw on the draw. Yeah. And then we just start throwing nades willy nilly. You throw me and look at him. Yeah. Yeah, just don't don't even look at him. Just 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 sh shoot for the stars. <laughs> What's funny is all the guys behind you kind of just disappear after yeah. that. They're like, oh, well, that's my cue. Exit stage left. Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> it's a little silly how that works, but even if you there's one guy in front of you, he'll just completely ignore you and run yeah. behind you. Um, right. So this laser, Zeke, how do you feel about this oh laser? Oh my dude? god, it's the slit. <laughs> this laser. Uh, the, the reference here is that I once lost a world record because this laser I has remember that. very <laughs> unfortunate mechanics behind it where if the laser is on anything that is not considered to be a part of that giant mega mice seat pile there, it will actually just straight up miss. And it's not like it misses and you get to a do-over. Uh, well? Yeah, so... Cat just oh, uh, expertly demonstrating an example of yeah. the issue that we're talking about. Yeah, right there. Very well done. That's actually job, exactly Kat. what I was talking about right there. Now she it's only did that to to show us what what it is. Yeah. Um, I've never had that happen to me before. That's so weird. I think yeah. you usually the die on phase, impact. By the way, I don't think it's gonna break after this. Uh. Yeah, I think you have one more. Maybe. The big armored lichens haven't spawned, so I imagine you have one more after this, though. Yep. Yeah. Uh, are you kidding me? So, uh, it takes 30 seconds for the laser to recharge. For some reason, Lobo doesn't understand that he should be firing in the same spot until the target is eliminated. I don't know why... <laughs> I, I don't know. Lobo needs to be replaced on, uh, on, on the alpha team. Yeah, he goes the beta team for sure. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Um, so if you miss with this laser, which should really never happen, you have to wait 30 seconds for it to reload, uh, which is really unfortunate. And it's kind of, it's it's not the, yeah, it's, it's not the most consistent not mechanic uh, at all. I'm going to go around. Yeah. This is really awkward. Uh, <laughs> queue in. This never happened before. <laughs> oh, this is so bad. Pretty good. There we go. Yeah, basically what happens is the laser will clip on some geometry that isn't technically a part of this giant pile. And uh, sometimes it'll be like an arrow that a lichen shot. And yeah. 
the game just bolt register the blast and it is an instant run killer well and you do a bunch of damage just not to the thing that you're supposed to be you know because it'll kill lichens but it won't do damage to the uh mega my seat and now we have urias again for a third time yeah uh although isn't this uh this is urias's brother it's not the same dude is it uh, i think it is is it Jeez. There's an opening in the roof. I got thrown off by the the laser. The uh, so this the thing about this Uriah fight on casual it's it's pretty straightforward is is cap three's three grenades to bring himself down and then staggered him once he landed and he'll actually stay staggered until he dies, uh, just like that. Uh, I think he's too far back. Hostile. Hostile. Too far back. No, I think you're good. Yeah. All right, we're yeah. good. Yeah. Perfect. Man, that was uh talk about <laughs> unlucky run. <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah, the Chris section is like uh, man. It's not hard tech on a technical level, like I said, right. it's not hard. It's just the game sometimes just decides to bug out and not work correctly. So you're just kind of stuck twiddling your thumbs. It's the Mega My Seat. And mega Mega My Seat. Actually, mega my she did it on purpose as an expert demonstration of what it's like ah, when yes. that laser misses. Exactly. Oh, yes, of course. That's exactly what I meant to do. Yes, yes. The full 4D experience of being a speedrunner in RE Village. <laughs> yep. We didn't expect Accurate. So soon. Oh, boy. But we're we're coming up to the end of the run very soon. We have one more boss left in us. And that will be, be the, that will be it. Miranda. Uh, Miranda. Well, that's the end of Chris's section. We uh, just got to see Mia there, but uh, unfortunately, we don't have time for Mia right now. So, <laughs> bye, Mia. Are you yeah, so Miranda has been Mia in a jail cell, and RE7 starts with Mia in a jail cell. <laughs> yeah, I was gonna say Miranda's been keeping Mia in a jail jail cell, and she's like, "Oh, not again!" Like this is how this is how RE7 went. Even the yellow tape guy showed up and <laughs> put tape on the lock it. for her. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Gosh dang it! Not again with this jail cell. <laughs> These cutscenes that uh, Kat's skipping here are actually like really cool cutscenes uh, because that one that she just skipped, you're actually, uh, you see Evelyn. Evelyn comes back and basically like the, uh, spoiler alert, uh, uh, Ethan's been dead. Uh, ever since RE7, he died uh, at the before. end of the guest house encounter with Jack Baker and he became molded uh, and that's why he does what he does. The assemblage of life and machine. I can feel Lord Heisenberg's All right, so now we're just going to uh, rapid fire our inventory here. Uh, I, no, 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 no. This simple modification can be done. Three on the bottom, right? Where's the four? Uh, you want to go to 10 ammo? Yeah. Hey, uh, so one more ammo capacity. Again! It froze again on her. Oh, no, dude. <laughs> what? Here? I've never seen it happen here. Uh, yeah, that's multiple. This has never here. happened before. Just give it a moment. I'm probably way overestimated by now. <laughs> Duke, please. Dude. You uh, were supposed to be the one. Uh, I'm a little nervous. I'm a little nervous. I know it's like 20 this seconds every single extreme. time. Uh... Uh oh. But wow, the game really hated her today. Holy moly! This was brutal. This is bad. Yeah. Oh, oh, you're back. It's worth mentioning. We can't hear you when that happens. Actually, Discord just like died. Very awesome. Thanks, Duke. Uh, no, not for 10, 15 seconds or whatever. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I feel. Yeah. Screaming. We were. We were saying we've never seen it freeze at the Duke. I've seen it freeze at a few of the other spots that you saw, but not the Duke. That's yeah, so never, weird. That's, that's definitely a first for sure. It's 
No, I'm We're getting there. Miranda. So Miranda is uh, a, a phased fight. She has like actually like five phases. But um, we're just going to blast. Like we're really <laughs> just going to like mouse one her until she dies. The trick here is to make sure you get her out of the Stark phase and nice. you kill her before she phases, which is going to happen right now. And that's it. Yep. Well done. Hey. That Miranda was perfect, I will say. Yeah, that was good. It, uh, yep. The game gives you infinite shooter. ammo here. <laughs> yeah, it's, that's at least a nice part, even though we had enough ammo to begin with. Yeah. But uh, yeah, Miranda's usually a lot harder, um, and she has a lot more to do in this section, but instead, uh, nope. And that's uh, time. Oh, well, GG. Ah, three minutes over my PB. Yikes. Uh, the game was sabotaging. That was not a fair. <laughs> not a fair three showing. Simple from... times. I don't think it's yeah. a... too bad. Yeah, Capcom. Yeah, was I apologize to, about that. I I know I shouldn't, but more for just uh, I hate it when that happens. But it's all good. Thank you everybody for for watching Resident Evil Village, um, and thank you Agdisis for having me on, as well as thank you to Niddle and. Zeke for being excellent commentators. Thank you very much. Yeah, good job. It was a good run. Yeah. Yeah. Nice it was. It was a lot of fun. I'm glad certain things went right, but unfortunate. If I d didn't lose all that time to the freezes, I probably would have been a lot closer to my actual time. But again, it's all good. Hey, my summer best is down to a 131. Let's go. Let's go. It was a good run, and thank you for being able to do it. I know last time we uh, had some complications, so I'm glad you're able to do the, uh, the redemption run of this. Yes, I'm no longer feeling icky, so uh, That's always I feel a lot better now. Uh, if anyone wanted to and, find uh, you on Twitch, where can they find you? You can find me on twitch.tv forward slash catlink. Uh, it's basically catlink everywhere, YouTube, Twitter, and all that stuff. I do a lot of uh, horror game speed runs, mainly around uh, Resident Evil, or pretty much anything I'm feeling in the moment. I also do challenge runs and play a lot of weird, obscure horror games. Uh, it's kind of my jam, so if you're into that, there you go. Um, and yeah. That's uh, that's gonna be the end of that. Oh, 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 we're freezing, we're freezing, we're we're pausing, we're all right. <laughs> what was the 136.50? Wow, <laughs> all right. I know I said thank you that's, for doing the I run don't... again, and I thank you all for commentating as well. Uh, but that hmm. just about wraps it up for the night. So, thank you all for watching, everyone. I hope you all had a good time watching uh, this episode of Speedruns from the Crypt. As always, we will be back in about two weeks with our next episode, where we focus on a variety of different horror games and general spooky speedrun content. Also, if the camera's on me, I found my lights. They're, they're around now. I, I, I found them while... The run was happening, so there they are. <laughs> uh, as always, I've been your host, Dick Dysis. You can find me pretty much everywhere, somewhere with this name. Uh, Twitter, Twitch, I talk a lot about how I make these shows and what goes into that, so if you'd like to know that, you can check that out. Uh, please join us for a raid. Uh, we'll be going to that in a moment, but I do want to say thank you all for watching, and have a great rest of the day and or night.